Oh, you muted. <laughs> what the? There she go. Can you hear me now? Uh, loud and clear. Can you... Oh, darn it. Thank you. Do we got to do this all over again? And we got sound. I love the energy, though. Mm -hmm. We got Dylan in the building or car show already. <clears throat> Don't tell me that Dylan beat Ricardo. What he is going on here? He did, he did yo. Room. He, he, he skipped the line. He's on Aussie he, Hey, time. Krista. So I'm glad Krista that is. Krista's in the comments because I wanted to open up with promoting her and Pablo de Don's new show. Hey, exclusively hey, hey. on Patreon called Schooling. And it, I, I love the idea. You know, Krista learning about the women of impact and just expanding women's wrestling. So please become a patron because uh, it's a lot of good shit on there. A lot of good shit on there. So today, fan club, we're back. We're going to get into Money in the Bank. It's that season. It's coming up this weekend. But before Ooh. that... I want to just let everyone know what's going on in the TWG universe. Brian and I have been cooking up some bonus episodes, looking back on some of the women's championships. Now that there are new ones, the Raw Women's Championship, SmackDown Women's Championship live on forever in our hearts. But it's a new era. This is going to be the first Money in the Bank where they're going to be competing and cashing in on these new championships. So it's just a really good time. So we went back, Brian and I, um, and we looked at the legacy of those two championships, the, the ones of the evolution from 2016 all the way to 2023. It was a lot to look back on, and it was exciting just to see how far the women have come already. Like, it's it's unbelievable. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, yes, Krista B was live with black wrestling on monday and as you know anytime we live with them it's it's a good time and it was a good time and she was able to talk to them about the brp 50 which we chatted about it's funny because we were doing the predictions i think for what the the number one and everything would be and then the at the list dropped and i mean i'm happy with the brp 50 now you know mm -hmm. Yeah, yo, I love, I love, yo, I love Krista B. Got everything. Yes, we definitely added to that. I don't know. If we should keep it a surprise of who is the next subject for our Men in Wrestling series, but just know that it was a very inspired conversation between three black wrestling fans that just want the best for us and will always advocate for us. So it's really, really good. All right, Krista B. Said. <laughs> We'll Christmas keep that as a surprise. So we yeah, keep that as a surprise. Keep the suspense of it all. I love surprises. <laughs> right? So all I'm going to say suspense. is become a patron. That's all yeah. I'm going to say is $1 yeah. a month. You contribute to Chris B and I, like, safety it's fund. Patron. It's like a nice little club. I, I patron. patron and she got on me. <laughs> well, I could see that you know Patreon. You know, you know, you know. Don't think of it as um, paying. Think of it as you're investing right. in the brand, and the brand is pumping out some great content that you guys just aren't ready for. That you're investing. Now I was talking about the Listen, pronunciation. No, let me keep it real. <laughs> keep it real funky with you. If you don't like having funky? FOMO on all this cool ass shit that we got <laughs> dropping for you, take your dollar or more and join the goddamn Patreon. How about that? Yes. And that's it's home. good. It's good yeah. stuff. And I, I really, I'm so proud of Krista B's new show. Um, and we also did Thirsty Thursday with Pablo this month. We have an interview with them. So go on YouTube and, and get to know them. Follow them on TikTok. Pablo is hilarious. They talk about everything pop culture entertainment on their TikTok. They're going to start streaming. There's a lot in the works. And, you know, we, we've we added them to the wrestling family. Mm -hmm. So shout out to Pablo to Don. Um, shout out to Krista B for connecting us with all these amazing people. Um, and Krista B... Thank you. BlurCon. Everyone on this stream and Krista B and I, we will be in what, Virginia or some shit? It's in Crystal City, Virginia. There right you outside go. of DC. You're basically Yay. going to the DMV. It's right outside of DC. Crystal City is really like across the river. Yeah. Well, we'll be at BlurCon. 
And that will be, I, I think a lot of our first time besides, I know Brian's probably like a veteran now there. But, <laughs> That's definitely um, my first time. Yes, it'll be our first time. And shout out to Doc who invited us. Um, there'll be some panels, some wrestling karaoke. So if you're in the DMV area, come say hi to us, you know, um, and it, it's BlurCon. So there's going to be a lot more to do, but some awesome wrestling content. So it's a great place to be if you're a wrestling fan in the DMV area. I'll try to post a lot of this on our social media so that everybody knows what's happening, but I'm excited. And for those not familiar with Crystal City, like it's very accessible. Trains are out there, buses out there. When I say it's literally across the river from D.C., it's literally across the river. It's a hop, skip, and a jump from D.C. It's literally right there. Cool. Mm-hmm. Should be a good time. Yes, yeah, I know Black is yeah. gonna be there. Jobber Tear is gonna be there. I was saying it's gonna be like a mini love you, Chris to be um Wale Mania, like a little family Which reunion. Like a, yeah. No, so like shout out to fam. We've been saying this since last year. We've been waiting for y'all to come down here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, true. make sure <laughs> come down here for what's up. <laughs> the only person I think who from the family that may be missing not sure i gotta check in what it might be Britt waters because we had a, a delegation at over lunch last year and that was one of the things we talked about that friday was making everybody come down here for a change because we family and we love y'all so you know we come play on y'all turf but now it's time for y'all to play on justin's turf because I, I ain't a part of dmv but you know <laughs> oh my god what I'm not treat yourself like you're on a foreign island. It's Maryland. <laughs> no. It's all Maryland. No, it's Baltimore. <laughs> oh but God, we'll, we'll Brian we're not doing this again. Because if not for Brian, I would not have found out about Bl- uh, Blur Climb. Because last year he attended, and I was like, "Negro, you do realize I live <laughs> away from where this shit is at, right?" That's really, how it you went. You could have just literally called or text, "Yo, Jay, what are you thought... doing?" I was like, "Bro, Bro. we posted it. We so, posted it." <laughs> this is his fault because he still thinks that Baltimore is a separate island, like. It's the island separate of from everybody else. So had he failed, do y'all do do New Yorkers claim New York State? Do y'all claim Albany? It's not that whether or not we claim it. Claim it's it. not New York City. Exactly, that's, and that's we're exactly. not in the DMV. But, but it's like literally not New York City, though. Like Baltimore is in Maryland. Like that's we're not, not we're Baltimore literally is in Maryland. Not a part of DMV. Oh, we're not doing this again. So you gotta on. pick a better anyway. analogy than Albany. You could have said like <laughs> White Plains or Yonkers. Or Mount Yonkers Vernon. not in New York City. Huh? No, no. New York City are the five boroughs. That's a fact. I thought That's I didn't know where Yonkers was. Up. My knowledge of Yonkers, Yonkers is the is lots. yonder. Like Yonkers is. I don't mean it's New York City. Uh, I didn't. I would have known. They, they seem New Jersey. Jersey to me. I thought it was. The- in the but city. that's a perfect analogy. Because you're from, from Maryland, Bal- Brian, But that's a perfect analogy. From Baltimore, from Baltimore to DC is the same as from Yonkers to the city. Okay. How do we have an argument about states and cities? So what about Red Hook? That's Brooklyn. That's Brooklyn. Okay. I'm just giving y'all stuff I heard when that's I'm a cool. neighborhood though. Oh, yeah, okay. You ain't, Got it. You talk about you always up here. You ain't been up here enough. We just said because you said Albany. I said Albany. I was always <laughs> up here. We just saying because you said Albany. Albany's like five hours away from like New York. Exactly. City. I was like, you gotta make that a little closer. Like Yonkers okay. is like yeah, yeah. driving Yonkers is like, is like what? right up there. 30 minutes. Yonkers is like coming to Jersey. 45, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Well, Crystal City gonna be lit because we're gonna be I'm in. Like, yeah, and I'm excited that food we're going to be truck, on the road again. The Mexican spots that's got good food that we had, some very good uh, quesadillas Ooh. last year. Um, so, and then, you know, I think there's karaoke. Oh, that might be the night before. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, the, I think that it's might be the night before, right? Friday night, Thursday night. Yeah. yeah. Karaoke was lit last year. Very lit. <laughs> I've <laughs> never seen year, wrestling right? karaoke, so that's oh. going to be so fun. I mean, you ain't, and then Corey singing Shawn Michaels theme, and then oh, him and his DC God. click doing the Uso penitentiary, and you know they dared me, so I had to do you know his theme you music. Mean, you mean tell me there's wrestling themed karaoke going on? That was yeah, we, this Dr. D we talking? Of course it is. <laughs> yep. What song would y'all do? Um, you know, I'm doing you. Trish Chaz's theme songs. That's the only mm. theme song oh, I've that's for that I don't know where for where. I'm wearing her glasses. Do, Luke, Kim. So, sky's the limit. Sasha Banks. I knew it. I, if I had to make a guess, I knew it would have been that one. Hey, gotta start off and if right. You, if you didn't do your boy, who would you do, Brian? That's a good question. I'm going to just say, I'm going to cheat and say The Rock. Because if, mm. if, if, if Janelle that's and Danny in the building, they're going to take Jericho. 
or, or and Cody. So nobody wants to do my time is now by John Cena. I'll Challenge somebody. I can't rap. I know my limits. <laughs> it's the slowest rap <laughs> I know my ever limit. created. <laughs> dun, 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 you can no, I, no, I actually did it at WrestleMania Access at WrestleMania 28. And he who shall not be named. Uh, if you want to know the story about WrestleMania 28, subscribe to the WrestleRound Patreon. It's on there. Um, he he just wanted to change the words mid song to make it by himself, and it threw everybody off. But what was worse is that we had like an audience because it was like we was like the two black people right there, and Brother Hugh was like, "Yo, everybody was lined up like y'all was really about to spit some bars." And then, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What?" He said, "Yeah, yo." Damn. He said, "You should have missed it. Everybody was lined up." And yo. as soon as he who shall not be named messed up the words, that he he killed the crowd. Ah, uh, don't you hate Damn. when that happens? Mm-hmm. That sucks. <laughs> oh, what is this? I'm gonna have to look this up. Ooh. Money in the Bank watch party in Brooklyn at Dave and Buster's. Wait, oh, what? Mm. So WWE is throwing this event. That, that would make sense considering interesting. That they, um, they're trying to bring themselves back to New York. Well, considering the show is over the pond. Across the pond. Yeah, and it's daytime, so you might as well just take advantage of that. A David Buster. That's dope. Play the That's Beatles dope. And watch I most wrestling. likely will be at Legends or home. I don't know yet. Is Legends doing a VM party? I don't know because it's I thought that was a given. They are not well, all the time. The day, when it's oh. They didn't the do Clash of the Castle because yeah, yeah. oh. the day. I remember it's during the day because of London, so it's like what, right. three p.m. start time. Yeah, something hmm. like that. I had an idea. <laughs> now I think I'm. I, 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 I'll think more on it offline. Okay. And I have my people contact okay. your people. Gotcha. You don't have to. I love um, that. You have but... my people call your people. <laughs> Sources course say Brian H. Waters has an idea. Ooh. No, can I? I got a bone to pick. Ooh, Ooh. Brunch. Ooh. Wait, Trow, who is who is they? Who's doing is a that, brunch party? Is it Jabra Tears or WWE? Because uh, I'm I'm here for, I'm here for a brunch review. Oh, forget. I used to love in the afternoon. Right, I used to love the WWF store and the restaurant. Yo, okay, so yeah. fun story about that, right? So the last person to be there was the Miz, and we were like in Times Square, like dope. Thank you, Charles. walking around. And someone like threw their Gatorade at him and he was leaving, but it was when everything was done. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, they didn't have to throw Gatorade at him. I didn't ever understood the Miz hit back then, but like, yeah, they definitely chucked one from across the way at oh him when he was God. leaving. And then like four, like about four weeks later, they shut down. Oh, wow. Isn't that where the hard rock is at? Cause I remember. It's oh, like thank you, Dre. You gonna be there? Yes. Bingo. So it's jobbers that's throwing the brunch at Legends. So, so right. when did they? Ooh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Fancy. Let me know if y'all go. Let me know if y'all going. Me and Siendo might have to pop up. Pull up, pull up, pull up. Yeah, that sounds fun. But I'm excited for the pay per view. I'm excited to get into some of our favorite Money in the Bank moments. And what's cool is we're not just going to talk about the cat. Of course, we're going to talk about the cash ins and winning the briefcase, the ladder matches. But I also want to talk about matches during the Money in the Bank pay per view because there's always, that's kind of, I re remember around Survivor Series season, people were trying to like debate whether or not Survivor Series was like a big four. And a lot of people argued that money, even actually my dad, I think too, said that the money in the bank one should be more considered the, uh, you know, a big one. Cause it has, you know, so much at stake. And I was like, you know, I never thought about it like that. And it's one of my, you know, favorite yeah. matches. It's so fun. They don't, you know, you've seen ladder matches, but it's not like you get a money in the bank ladder match all the time. So it's like that one gimmick match that literally happens one time a year and it can mean so much for somebody. So I'm excited to look into these matches and everything like that. Everyone in the club, y'all gotta y'all gotta let us know which our favorite Money in the Bank moments are, matches, cash ins, all of that. And we, you know, we touch on the women, of course, but we want to talk about all of our favorite moments mm -hmm. because how old is this match now? All I remember, so like, it goes back to WrestleMania twenty one, mm -hmm. and that was WrestleMania twenty one, um, eighteen years to, ago, to be something like yeah, and yeah. like personally, I would rather it stay on WrestleMania. I understand the significance of it being 
a premium live event, a pay per view. But I personally liked it because it also said you had to cash in by the next WrestleMania. So for mm-hmm. time's sake, mm-hmm. it was so much easier to keep track of, especially with Money in the Bank. At one point, it was in July. At one point, it was the end of June. So now you're like, okay, so wait, when is when are we at a year where WrestleMania? You knew by WrestleMania, you had to cash in, and then you also you automatically had like those two people who were involved in the match. So that's where I'm at with that. And it's funny that you say, Patricia, like people are arguing if Money in the Bank's part of the Big Four. I consider it to be the Big Four because there's no more TLC, and TLC was like the last pay per view of the year. So for me, it's always been like. Royal Rumble starts the year, then you have WrestleMania, then you have the anticipation of what's happening for the rest of the year at Money in the Bank, then you have SummerSlam, and everything else falls in between. It depends on what they decide to put at the end of the year, well, Survivor Series, considerably... How about this? You came on the Those Wrestling Girls platform and disrespect the Survivor Series. Two Listen, pay-per-views you don't disrespect. That's Royal Rumble the- Survivor Series. You know what, oh man, I ain't got time for you and your Jim cool, Cornette you know, like rant life. right now. Anyway... Don't try and get me kicked out of the club. But to me, hey, if it was like dope. a five five, you could do a five five. Or you cut me off. That's why I was dead. Well, it used what? to be a classic five. It was King of the Ring. And that was yeah. the thing. But now and they're you, back they used King to sell it, it. They used to like sell it in packages, like the tapes. And I was thinking, like, okay, y'all took away the King of the Ring as a show, put it back, like give us money in the bank and make that a part of it. You know, especially, and then you always think of like Money in the Bank is kind of like sometimes a kickoff the summer, the road to SummerSlam, especially mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. it's a lot of those stories set up for SummerSlam. So, see, yeah. I look at Money in the Bank different from you guys. Like, I agree with Sienna. Like, for me, it's it's part of the Big Four, and it's the plan Survivor Series, but for a different reason because Money in the Bank is more significant than Survivor Series. Like before you would have brand supremacy or like Survivor Series actually meant something when you would team up mm-hmm. heels versus faces and there was more at stake and on the line than just what it is now, which is what brand supremacy or like the bloodline yeah. versus whoever. Whereas money in the bank, there's actual significance. You have the money in the bank contract. You have that briefcase on the line where they can cash in whenever. And we have seen it on even the most recent money in the bank uh, pay-per-views people will cash in on the same night to where uh-huh. now it's like yo if you're a champion you gotta put your head on a swivel because now that that briefcase is in play anyone can get it men yep. and, or women and now that they establish that for the men it doesn't have to be just a top title it's like now you as a champion it's like mm-hmm. fuck, now i gotta deal with whoever i'm wrestling but then now i got that briefcase that i gotta watch out for and it's whenever wherever and because of that significance, yeah. that's where it supplants Survivor Series for me. Because now that pay per view means something. Like Royal Rumble, the winner main events WrestleMania. That means something. WrestleMania is the greatest stage of them all. That's the Super Bowl. SummerSlam is the second biggest show of the year. Mm-hmm. And that's where Money in the Bank is like, yeah, Survivor Series ain't hitting the same way in importance as Money in the Bank does. I agree. And one cool thing I like about how it started, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe. Chris Jericho came up with the idea for the match because he wanted a match to include more guys. Cause you know, everybody wants to be on the WrestleMania card. So throwing everyone in a ladder match is a great way, but then make it mean something. We've seen a ladder match a million times. How is this one going to be different? So something had to be on the line and that's when the contract came to be. So I love stuff like that because then it ended up being so much more than that Mm -hmm. what 18 years later the women ended up getting one and those moments um Mm -hmm. so let's take a a quick break and then we'll get into one of my favorite moments that dre uh wealth warrior just put in the fence um so yeah so let's take a quick break tweet hashtag tdog fan club and we'll be right back And she made history carrying this briefcase. She did. And it, I like the fact that she kept teasing. Yes. The opportunity came up. So fucking good and she funny. kept teasing. She kept like, am I going to? Or she'll run to the ring and be like, ah, no. Wow. <laughs> that no. was so good. So she held it for, right. uh, I think, 284 days, uh, which is the longest that anyone has. 87 287 days that was the longest a woman has held it and i this is why i always say i think heel should carry the briefcase or uber baby faces because she was able to tease us every week and it made us hate her more 
Yo, speaking <laughs> of money in the bank, shout out to Peacock for having it on all weekend. Mama was mad at that match because I don't know. I didn't realize low key, my mom roots for Charlotte. You could tell mm-hmm. it's an mm-hmm. aneurysm. She was like, oh, she's got to get up there. So when she saw Ellsworth get up and drop that case on Carmella, she was like, well, that's not really fair. I thought it was a women's thing. Why they got a man involved? That kind of takes away from yeah, the whole mom, thing. And I'm looking at her honest, talk. Yeah. And I'm like, did my mother just watch this whole thing over my shoulder <laughs> and make commentary? Like, what kind of family am I, I get? Like, this is turning into a family business. Like, what are mama we doing knows. here? Holy, like, uh, next thing Yo, you know, my mom's going to have a TikTok. I, I don't know. That. Content. But yeah, go go check out our Carmella episode because we talk a lot about her cash in, her carrying the briefcase, what it meant for her character and everything she did with it. Um, but I want to shift gears and just talk about, you know, things that we don't normally talk about. So Seth cashing in. Mm. Now, I know, I just, I know the moment because, duh, but like, I, I don't remember the stakes i didn't know who seth rollins was so can somebody like set this up and why this was like so epic besides the fact that it's like seth freaking rollins rollins brian you go ahead oh what makes it so awesome so seth rollins was makes it so awesome oh yeah well let's pick it up from there what made it so awesome simply the fact that he cashed in during a match and it had never been done before. When you think about all the other times, they would cash in when the champion was weak or the champion had just had a hellacious match. You look at Edge and JBL would say, or Michael Cole was like, come on now, not this way. Undertakers, like, barely could stand up. John Cena finished Elimination Chamber match. Seth Rollins cashed in on Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar when they had their very first match and you're like, Oh no. Now let's step back. Just talk about the IWC on this night. Everybody in their mother just knew Roman Reigns was finally going to become champion. Nobody wanted him to be champion. This is fresh off of that Royal rumble win. So when this happened and it was so bad, like even go, I'm gonna put it like this. My kicks on my fix. Corey didn't go to that WrestleMania. That's how bad the buildup was. Ooh. <laughs> Wow. Oh, okay. I, I, Which it, was this, say? Yeah, huh? that build up. Which was mania it? was this? WrestleMania 31, 31 in San, is, uh, to, Santa Clara. Yeah. The 49ers play at. And, yeah. and I remember vividly, like, we was doing a show together, and I was thinking he was, I didn't prepare for him to be there. And I was like, wait a minute. You, you, didn't, he said, no, I didn't go. And so when Rollins cashes in, that's the reason it's known as the heist of the century because of the fact he cashed in during the match nobody saw it coming he got lesnar out of there who was essentially unbreakable he hadn't lost he had just he was fresh off beating undertaker and taking john cena to suplex city that night was when he coined the term suplex city cashing in on the golden boy roman reigns and that's what made that in my opinion the greatest cash in of all time because of you didn't see it coming the moment was right there and he went and snatched it, especially after having a WrestleMania moment earlier, which he was doing the receiving end of Randy Orton's uh, epic RKO. And then to add just some additional context to this, like remember from WrestleMania 30 to WrestleMania 31, you have the disillusion of the Shield, which Rollins orchestrates, mm-hmm. basically breaks up the Shield, teams up with the Authority. I didn't sell out; I bought in, and that's the whole <laughs> I bought in stuff. And Seth Rollins becoming part of the authority and the authority getting involved to make sure Seth wins a lot of stuff, which is how Seth gets the briefcase to begin with. Yep. He wins that briefcase J&J with security. the help of J&J security and the authority. And then Seth and Dean feud that summer. So this entire time you see Seth building and building and building and winning the confidence of Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. You got corporate Kane. You got J&J security making sure like, yo, we got Rollins back the entire time. And it culminates at WrestleMania where no one knew what was going to happen because Brian was perfect. No one's ever casted at WrestleMania, let alone the fucking main event of WrestleMania. Oh, like, no one expected that shit. Mm-mm. And then you also think about the buildup. There what like, if you're going to be completely transparent, there was, like, no real anticipation apart from Sting showing up 
and like no one knowing it, no one knowing what this pay-per-view was gonna be, because remember what happened in 30 the year before. What happened? The, the streak was ended. over. So this was your first, this is one of your first WrestleMania's really without the the and all of mm-hmm. the Undertaker having his streak defended and going possible oh so people were not like you look at it back then people were not excited like i just remember it also being aj lee's like the first time that we would see aj in a match and then the next night she retires so people didn't know that was going on so it was just the lure of okay we don't really know what's going on with this car we don't know what to expect and then that cash in happens and it's not in the format that it's normally happened. We're used to like the Miz cashing in on like John. We used to like Edge cashing in on two, not once but twice. We're used to CM Punk taking full advantage of Jeff Hardy and cashing on him. Like everybody was after the match by surprise. You had a couple of noble matches here and there, which obviously they lost. I think the first person to lose the um the lose during a cash in was who John Cena. Probably. Yeah, we, uh, no, yeah, he um, lost. Failed cash in. Yeah, it was a failed cash in. Yeah, against CM Punk. Against CM Punk, but other than that, it was like okay, you know that these them like people literally wait. Like when Alberto Del Rio, wait, was it when Dolph Ziggler had it that whole time? People were waiting for Dolph Ziggler to show up out of nowhere to mm-hmm. cash in, and because they were like, oh no, Dolph's gonna cash in now. Oh, Alberto Rio's now he's gonna cash in. But then he waits the night after WrestleMania to do what? Cash in after a Borderito's like half beaten up. So the allure of it was you always cash. It was the biggest opportunity to sneak in and get it. And Seth Rollins was like, you know what? No, hell with that. I'm going to interrupt yeah. your whole plan. I'm going to fuck up the whole game. I'm going to join you. And you see the result from there. Mm-hmm. That was good. I'm glad Dylan they um, brought up the for a reason, And that was one of the reasons. Right. And that helped his whole what they call it the heist of the century. Like the I think that just, that just like cemented his Fucking character in that screen. moment. This is brilliant. This cemented <laughs> Seth Rollins too because Seth Rollins. Let's be real. Out of the Shield members, Dean Ambrose had the cult following, but Seth Rollins was like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn when they first got the WWE. They were indie guys. Him yeah. getting that Money in the Bank briefcase. Sure, he was. He was still had a lot of Tyler Black on him until he joined the Shield, but he was always kind of like, and he's talking about changing his haircut, so he wouldn't look so much like Roman Reigns. But mm-hmm. if y'all remember during that time, everybody was saying it was either going to be Roman or Dean as far as the guys, and yeah. Seth Rollins for a while was past both of them. And this was one of the moments, like from the the moment from the chair shot when he was playing B all the way to this, and this when he solidified himself as a WWE superstar as opposed to being a professional wrestler. And it's, since we're talking uh, about this uh, moment at WrestleMania, can we show some love to the cameraman and the cameraman's oh, assistant yeah. that got that tracking shot who yes. went, he sprinted up the fucking ramp when Rollins' music hits. Rollins mm-hmm. comes out, passes him, and then the cameraman's sprinting right behind Rollins. Now, remember, Rollins is a trained fucking professional. The cameraman's right. like got to go up the fucking ramp and come back down the ramp while keeping mm-hmm. the shot with his entire equipment there and he's those are the entire heavy. Time. you know what's funny that's the same guy that be chasing john cena and follow him down the ramp it's the mm-hmm. same guy <laughs> like i don't know what gym you join and what personal trainer you got but sign us up because that was a quick like for you to be down and then go all that was quick that's a very i'm glad you brought him up because we take the, that for granted because we see that clip every year all the time mm-hmm. but you don't think like how that shot was able to even freaking happen and it's all of that. And you get but one chance I, to get that right. Yeah, exactly. Can we talk about Dolph Ziggler real quick? Yes, we can. Yep. All day, day, six, five. I, yes, I love him so much. <laughs> Shout out to Dolph. He, when I first started getting back into wrestling and everything, um, like in the early like 2010s or whatever, people were saying that that was one of the loudest pops when Dolph came out and ultimately mm-hmm. was able to um, beat, I think, Alberto Del Rio. Yep. Yes. Like that was one of the biggest pops that they ever heard. Now, Brian, were you watching at the time? Like, what was that moment like? Oh, vividly, vividly remember that because people wanted him to do it the night before at WrestleMania. But this is what made Raw like Raw after Mania, if we be honest, was a thing since the 90s. Obviously, that's when Triple H recreated D Generation X mm-hmm. and everything. The Rock turned on the nation. But this right here, this is what set the standard for 
what we want now. And they haven't like there hasn't been a it's been some good ones like when the Dudley Boys came back. The, um, uh, I can't think of the name. Um, Enzo and Cass came up. There's been some good moments. Don't get me wrong, but this right here was like the one that solidified it. And you look at like you think about professional wrestling, right? Now Dolph Ziggler had been a world champion. Like he was like Vicky Guerrero had like awarded him the championship, which he would lose like the same night, but. As he's walking out there, you can see like he's trying to hold that emotions because he knows his moment is about to come. And that's when it's as real as it gets for anybody. Like Kevin Nash says, there's two things that's real when you win the world title and when you go into the Hall of Fame. So when he cashed in and, you know, with Del Rio and then for that New York crowd to go crazy, Mm -hmm. to go crazy, that was a moment right there. So that's why I can understand why Dylan says it's the best to me it's always a coin toss between those two and depending what day one day i might say it's Dolph, one day i might say it's Seth. <laughs> you know but that's how good like and it, it was also one of those things that like you always remember where you were you know you always remember like man was sitting there watching raw is just raw and boom Dolph ziggler's music hit i'm here to show the world and then boom he becomes a world champion. That's why I have Seth's number one for me, because that's one of those. I remember where I was at WrestleMania 31, and I was one of the mm-hmm. few people that was calling the fucking cash in. Because it's mm-hmm. like, no one wants Brock to retain. Everyone fucking loathes Roman winning this title. Yep. What if Vince just does some fuck shit and Seth cashes in tonight? And then when his music hit, I was just jumping up and down for like the entire time. Like, I fucking <laughs> told you. Bro, I had the graphic ready for the show I was producing at the time. I have never been like so proud up to that moment. I was like, I had it ready. I had it ready because it took a while. So it was, yeah, that was amazing. But both of those moments, you yeah, know. Yeah, Dolph's the top three, definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, I was there. Ooh. Ooh. Talk about it. Florida first yours. of all. That's a flex. It's, <laughs> that's a flex. Hello. I love it. Like, first of all, I always say RIP to the Eyes On Center because people don't understand. That was like one of the last great moments at the Eyes On Center. Before it closed, long live, live former Connell Airlines Arena, all that, Ooh, all of that. But the fact that, first of all, shout out to Peter Rosenberg because he was front row there, by the way. Um, sh- but just the fact that it was like everybody who, people who could afford to come to Raw and the people who were at WrestleMania last night were there. Like you had people high on Fandango. I don't know what it was in the water. I don't know why it was about people high on Fandango. No, it's definitely People amazing. were excited about. Um, yeah, it was the day. It had to be. It had to be because I'm like, like, really? You got to like the about whole this when we did the, the theme parking songs. lot to the area from the arena to the, the goddamn parking lot with that theme song. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of people when I remember walking into the arena with the person I went with and there and I was like, I feel like Dolph's gonna do it. And people and the person over a turn around, they go, Oh, he's definitely doing it tonight. And one person was like, Nah, he ain't stupid. I'll be I'll both the Rio was like on the high. He's gonna have this rematch, it's gonna be lit. And then when I saw Del Rio hurt himself, I was like, It's happening. Mm. I I grabbed him first, I was like, It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. And then the bell rings and he retains and nothing happens for a while. And all of a sudden, when you hear Dolph's theme song, the pop. When I tell you I couldn't hear, like I, I lost sense of his theme song in that moment because then you are on an adrenaline high and then you see AJ and then you see Dolph on my end because I'm like I'm like way far stage right. So all you see is AJ come out and you see I said, holy shit, he's gonna cash in. And mm-hmm. the way he walked, he he ain't walk with a rush. He nope. walked with a purpose because he knew I this still moment vividly was his. Yeah, I was truck. like, what? See, and- I gotta ask you this real quick. Cause you're a content creator. Was you on tout then or vine? I was on Vine. Because <laughs> did, did you did Vine. you did you do this moment for I the did. Vine? I did. Like <laughs> the, the little shaky vines, the Android where it's like, ah, and then you see like a clip, and then you see me trying to flip my phone. I'm gonna find it because it's somewhere in the Google Docs. I'm gonna okay. find that shit. Please, because when I tell you yes. to see it, it when I tell you the place erupted, mm-hmm. like I could not hear. I went home with I went home the next day. I went to work with a ringing ear because that's how crazy it was. Like he and people take commercial breaks for granted that went on for an additional three minutes mm. so like he was out there he was he was out there he like he was crying aj was out there biggie was out there he was chatting the crowd up to clap for him he walked out he walked to the side people were like cheering for him that went on for three 
whole minutes. Like the, the place goes and you, we've been to a, a live taping. So the place turns black and they do their advertisement and they start cheering. And then like, it was a whole bunch of, it was just a fun night. Like they were, they, they were so bored with the, um, I think it was Randy Orton, Sheamus and some other match. They were like the cheering on JBL. The, the, the ball, the, um, when they were throwing the, the yeah. beach balls. Yeah, they were they were cheering JBL, they were cheering Michael Cole, they were that. cheering Teddy Long, they were cheering Stephanie McMahon, they were yeah, cheering. You took it back. I, I, I remember, I remember that, but I forgot about it. That's where that whole beach ball stuff they started. They were cheering right the referee. I was like, damn, they're oh, really? really not because it was yes. the same redundant stuff. It came across well on TV, so I can imagine yeah. what it was like being there. So that's when I realized two things: a, New York wrestling fans are the realest motherfuckers alive, besides Chicago fans. And two, Boston comes in a close third because they're crazy. They're worse, if anything. Boston, they don't like you. They don't like you. But New York is a whole different breed. Boston, but I'm proud Philly? of it. No, Philly's Philly's toned it down since mm. they've toned it down. You know who takes their place though? I want to say England fans are starting to take their place. Like mm. British fans are starting to take their place. Or Canadian. Well, Can- Canadians oh, no. in its own like they're it's in their hard own to choose between like I got England number like, two. Yeah, like they go ham. Because they, they don't ham. get it all the time. I got That's them. What I was gonna say like I got them over Chicago. And then I think Canada's in its own country. Like the way they booed CM Punk AEW that night, I was like, God damn. And the way they cheer Sami Zayn. Hello, bro. That's that's <laughs> one of the craziest look, look, pops. Real this quick, year. P and Justin, have y'all ever been to a cash in? Like, like seen cash one. Yeah, it's witness one live. Like it. The closest one is one that we'll talk about later, and I left that day. Mm. See, that I was happened. there for Daniel Bryan's. Were Bowl. you? Mm-hmm. Do tell. Um, do tell. So he cashes in on Mark Henry. It's actually on like one of my old YouTube channels. I like recorded it because I was. I remember being upset because Mark Henry versus the Big Show in the chairs match at TLC in 2011, and mm-hmm. Big Show won, and that was like a surprise. Yeah, because Mark Henry was on this Hall of Pain run, and it was so much fun. And I was like, oh. man, I get to be there to see a Black World Heavyweight Champion walk nice. into the, and then he loses. So I'm like, are you kidding me? And I'm screaming like, no. Then I thought about, I said, wait, Daniel Bryan has the money in the bank. And I wasn't like, I was a fan of his, but not the way I am now. Mm-hmm. So when that music hit, Flight of the Valkyries, and he ran out there, he's grabbing the referee. <laughs> it was like, yo, this is crazy. And then he like. It just happened like so fast and he, he cashes in. And then what was so cool was that night we was like hanging around like near the buses and he came out and shook all our hands. So Aww. like that, like Aww. that moment right there. And this is like fresh cut Daniel Bryan, which he, when he started doing the um, yes chance where he was like, he got so obnoxious when he had that briefcase. I mean, when he became world heavyweight champion, but like just to be there for a cash in, it's nothing Hate like so- it. I just think about him and how like the whole the but look at the transition like Get he your went hands to smack off down, my shoulder. <laughs> your hands on my shoulder and what he was having like he had that whole thing with AJ Lee getting bumped by the big show. First of all, that was a solid yeah. take on the bump. And then he had come out in a neck brace yeah. and had her plea in his case. Yep. And then it turned like you wanted sympathy for her, but then she turned the whole thing to have sympathy for him and highlighted how great of a boyfriend. I was like, what is going on? Yo, like, that was the modern day <laughs> macho and Elizabeth. Yo. Ooh. And he was like, he was like, I am he's like, you hurt my girlfriend. And now we're going <laughs> home and we're going home in a Prius. Cause he was all environmental. Yeah. And shit. I, <laughs> I like, forgot about <laughs> In a fucking Prius. That, that it is so Prius. <laughs> but see, like, and because up until then, like, he was often said, like, he has no personality. You know, that's when him and yeah. the Miz would go back and forth. And we literally saw him get that personality, which he would become a phenom by the time WrestleMania 30 came along. He was like the greatest thing on earth. I yep. am a wrestling genius. Yep. <laughs> and I love when, like, People surprise you when they're actually like funny. Can we give him his uh, like send up prayers and good vibes for him after yeah. this past week? First of all, if y'all didn't see that match with Okada, check it out. I, I like I have been waiting for it. Like you know, Justin, we always talk about like just like knowing Okada's work, right? Mm-hmm. And like Brian said that he wanted to have that match when he was in WWE. He was like, "Oh, I want to wrestle that guy." For them, so the match to me lives up to the hype somewhat. But then for him to know that he broke his arm, like extra points, extra stars, extra uh, points on CNDO scoreboard, even though it doesn't rate men. The yeah, fact that he went out definitely. there 
and did his thing and yeah. won. And then like to see like his arm. Shout out to Nurse Bree because we know she's gonna take care of him. Stand but by man, your man. Yeah, man. What like just I mean, he's the best in the world. The man wrestled with that for an additional 10 minutes. He tried yeah. to yeah. his fucking finisher with his bone like this. Oof. Yeah. Like, bruh, how? And you know, people were and it is it it that's another like dark side of the fan base. It's like people were actually pissed. <laughs> About the ending, and I'm like, y'all do realize like a fracture, a fracture is a fracture. I've been in a dark side of a rabbit hole. You just said dark side of the fan base. That wasn't a fracture. Mm. That's not a fucking fracture. And then you look at it, and it's like that was a break. As somebody who sees somebody shit spin crack, it's not fun. It's not fun at all. It's not fun. It's not. It is not fun. And yeah, people no. for them like 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 my boy Justin would say go touch grass because <laughs> respectfully if you tell you've been there shut up yeah it's, it's always that's like that all out. the flowers for wrestling that match with that uh, fracture like that a thousand percent and I think he knew that he couldn't let he didn't want to let the fans down he was excited for the match it was his dream match just as much as it was ours so yeah. at least he was able to put on a banger and hopefully he'll you know he'll be okay. Um, while we're off topic, I do want to touch on because this uh was a women's match, we probably should have probably scored it. Um, but they did their thing, Athena and Kara Hogan. Mm-hmm. They get a they get a 4.9 for me. Sorry, that whole match was Ooh. for me. It started with wow, the hung on to every it's second, that, it's it held on every second, and it, I was it, not missing that match. It, it started with the entrance and the gear when I watch a yeah. street fight. I want to. I want to like. It wasn't planned. You to look like you get ready to go into a street fight, not right. that you get ready to go wrestle ten minutes and, or I mean, sixty minutes. And they look like they was like, look, we already beat each other up. Um, it wasn't the that they, Huh? It wasn't playing. No, nah, it wasn't. I'm like, y'all really hate each other. This, this um, is what Zeus. This is what Zeus needs to capitalize on. Like, either this is like <laughs> this is better than anything. Mombatis West, East, South, Midwest. I wish Overseas, it was on cable whatever TV. baddie section season Me name is better than this. Yeah. Jocelyn's Cabaret Fight Club, starring yeah, Athena and Kira. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And hey, Vaughn, and he's right. Athena went from 100 to the top 10. Nah, you gotta say it yeah. like she said it. What, <laughs> Handy? Oh, I don't know. I, I would never. <laughs> Oh, say boy. it, say it. Shut Come up. on, yeah. one time, one time, one time. I ain't getting kicked out of club for Athena. I'm sorry. One time. <laughs> but I am excited for her because I wasn't always convinced that she was gonna like find her stride. But I think yeah. Ring of Honor is the perfect place for her. And Kara Hogan is so hungry. Mm-hmm. Like she mm-hmm. is ready to pop. She's been ready to pop. So every time she has opportunity, she always brings it. So I, I imagine where she'll probably place. If she keeps getting booked the right way in the next like year or so, no. let's hope they do it right. Dang. Yes, and she can That's go, man. Can At the end of the day, go. like I love seeing these black women go out there because we didn't have a lot of black women, let alone you know two black women in a high level premier world title match. Right. You know, so to be able to see this, like this is amazing. What did Dylan say? He was like, when you see when you see women strut down the braids, you you know it's about to go down. Damn right, <laughs> you know <laughs> when the sister struts down. Dylan, damn no. right, Dylan. You <laughs> already know. <laughs> you already know, like Big Frida said. <laughs> you already know, honey. Yeah, Kara does. She always represents, especially for Pride. So that was cool. I love yes. that. Well, well, real quick, speaking of which, let's touch on talk about her lady Diamante. You know, mm-hmm. coming up short against Layla Gray. They about to run it back tomorrow. Ooh. <laughs> so uh, they are. Shout out to Layla Gray out here getting W's, you know. Yeah. So, you know, she's been winning. You know, she's held a couple championships on the indie circuit. You know, mm-hmm. now at Ring of Honor doing her thing, you know. And, and you see in the comment section, Jade ain't on TV, but Jade's supporting her. So it's mm-hmm. like, all right, you know, I, I want to see. At the end of the day, we want to see these women's wrestlers get their right. just do get the stories and i love being able to talk about them on this great platform yeah same same thank you for um bringing that up it was that part um brian because mm-hmm. we definitely need yes respectfully layla gray <laughs> let's, let's just do a real quick plug if you don't mind go ahead S- schooling schooling with pablo the don like right like right here 
exclusively on the those wrestler girls patreon you know i was yep. you know I'm a, I'm a member so i was just watching learning about wow and you know so a uh, shout out to krista b and pablo the don they doing their thing over there so I love this is the place you need to be the idea like it's so dope Mm -hmm. And I love also just learning about all these women. I don't know if anybody remembers um, JT's platform that he used mm -hmm. to have. Uh, and it was named after Athena's finisher. And that's when I, okay. I learned so, yes, Old Face Wrestling. I learned so many of the independent women, like including Layla Gray that are now on AEW and got signed to WWE. A lot of them I learned from his platform like years mm -hmm. ago, years mm -hmm. ago. Um, so I'm going to see if maybe one day he can be a special guest on, on a fan club and, and talk about, cause he was such a huge advocate for women's wrestling, especially on the indie scene. And he goes to shows, he buys their merchandise. He really was a huge support and a huge Athena fan. So, um, yeah, shout out to Ofe, shout out to JT. You know what we do here, P manifesting. Manifesting. Yes. I'm still learning, man. That's the best thing. Like Rick Flair said, if you're not, if Rick Flair's still learning, I look, Flair ain't in my top 10. You're learning from but, Charlotte. Hey, bingo. Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, she's better than him and that he wouldn't right. have it any other way. But if he, That's like true. he said, if you're not still learning, then what are you doing this for? Right. Right. Exactly. <clears throat> Speaking of Charlotte, is it funny that she is always like the person that gets cashed in on? <laughs> like whether it's she's the only person with the prototype <laughs> nine times out of ten she's gonna be champion like if you had to bet money at she's any point in time of the year the Flair just might time. be champ like <laughs> let's not be surprised if she wins this time and whoever wins the money at the bank catches on her ass again because no, no, like no, she another no, person no. <laughs> listen between roman reigns not learning that he shouldn't turn around when it comes to people who don't like him and her knowing that if she's champion she's gonna get pinned after a match she should just walk out none of them learn a lesson like, all right I it was okay the first time mm -hmm. it happened to her three times people three 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 happened three, to three. her three times three who's the third Wait, you know, did it happen to her three times or twice? Like Carmella. Bailey, Carmella. Bailey. Yeah, that's all I remember. Yeah. Hold on a sec. Because I think but, she was sure? in on Rhonda. Okay. Alexa, Liv, Liv or Margaret. Liv or Rhonda. Okay, so Alexa twice. was no. on Naya. Oh, Naya. Naya. And Oscar just got handed. Oscar the won the title, title the next yeah, day. Yeah, Oscar got handed because Homegirl was carrying La Baby. But yeah, it uh, happened to you twice, this. Nikki well, Ash. Ash. Nikki Ash, it was a third. Why yeah. do we always yeah. forget So it her. happens. So Crazy is, I remember best. Nikki having it. I just didn't remember who she catched. Oh, it, so, was, it, was, so it was the Raw after, I believe it's the Raw after Money in the Bank. And yeah. Rhea got involved and beat that ass on Charlotte because Rhea was pissed that beat Charlotte that beat her. Right. And then after Rhea beat that ass, all of a sudden Nikki comes trotting out. And God bless her because she's small, but we still love her. But you see Nikki just trot out. I love cash Nikki, in. Bro. <clears throat> so but, what happened to you three times, Charlotte? But Seattle's on the like, on you. I, oh, I, I feel like this is. On you. I feel like this is three WWE. times. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is Sorry, WWE, like the, the jokes on us, right? This is how W is like. We fucking hear you. Yes, we act like we don't pay attention to you on social media. We don't hear you guys complain about Charlotte's the champion, all this and that. There's a reason why she's been cashed in three times because that means if she's champion. Whoever the money in the bank holder and cashes in on Charlotte is going to cash in successfully, and y'all going to cheer whoever cashes in because you're just happy that ain't one but fucking Charlotte. <laughs> That's how you get Nikki ASH over. That's how you get Bailey over. That's how you get Carmella over. Even though Carmella also had the Iconics help her out, but that's how you get them over. Is everyone wants to see Charlotte lose because they're tired of Charlotte wins. LOL. Mm -hmm. I, all right, I have faith. This will be the year. This will be the year. That a woman holds the briefcase more than twenty four hours. You Hallelujah. hold on to that faith, my guy. Hallelujah. If it's Trish, I can see Trish playing mind games with it for I'm a while. Hoping, I'm hoping. That's what I want. If I want Trish, Trish to win this so If it's Becky, oh, you best believe Becky gonna whoop three I Ripley's hope ass. I'm sorry. It's not Becky. Becky's not winning this. I'm gonna tell Becky, you, Becky, Becky dude, she's reach. gonna do the. The only the shocking in. factor in here is Salida Vega. I think they're and gonna give us my Salita favorite Vega to win. She that's was my fair. favorite going in, mm -hmm. but now I'm not going against Trish Stratus. I'm go. Look, we we I'm a ride. 
with her did to the wheel. Today, did everybody think Trish today? Absolutely, I did. Okay. Wait, right, what did good. Trish do today that we were thanking her? What? Um, she we, 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 exists. Existing? Yeah, yeah, she exists. Hashtag I mean, I mean, we'll Always thank her for that. I mean, that's that's yes. nothing. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm just I'm just making sure that everybody is is doing that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know? I've been on the Zelina bandwagon for a minute. I've put my reasons for it. And again, look at who's in this match. Everyone else has beef with someone in this match. Bailey and EO have been hinting at beef. Trish mm-hmm. and yeah. Becky have had beef. And then Zoe Stark is also on Trish's side. Becky's going to make sure Trish and Zoe's not getting that briefcase and vice versa. Bailey's going to cost EO or EO's going to cost Bailey. Who doesn't, mm-hmm. who doesn't have any beef with anyone? Fucking it's Zelina. Zelina Vega, yeah. And she could use her size. She can be... Uh, remember, like, in other matches, she would just find a way to not be in the match or and then, like, come in after. Just like, fall she back, could really use that her to have in it. Or just fall back, let everyone kick each other's ass, and clean up, yep. go up, and go get the briefcase. This is exactly how Alexa Bliss won the briefcase in 2018. Everyone yep. else beat each other's Imagine ass. Imagine the pop got when it. Zelina wins. Like, it's- that is going to be unbelievable. I just yeah, it's ooh. I, I think it's her time. Like she went out there, she showed she can get over. And you said it, an Uber baby face, right? She would be that Uber baby face that would hold the briefcase and strike when the time is right. She would be so methodical with it, man. Like and I, look I, how she's been bugged since backlash. They've been she's been winning. She's been protected. Right. It's for a mm-hmm. reason. Mm-hmm. And not to mention, she's so good on the mic mm-hmm. that she can just entertain us the entire time she's holding the briefcase. Uh, I just, I honestly would be okay with anyone winning. I do think it's Elena Vegas time, except for Becky, yeah. because it shouldn't. I, you, I like the Royal Rumble and the Money in the Bank briefcase. I feel like should be a vehicle to p- bring up someone that needs an opportunity. Becky right. Lynch don't need no fucking opportunity. She don't need a title but shot. She's had title shots. Give mm-hmm. it to somebody that we want to root for, you know? I feel like I get you, but I feel like they don't do well when it comes to the briefcase being an opportunity for someone because look at Liv Morgan. Like we've completely Well, they cashed just... in the the same the same night and right. they became champion. I can't think of a better come up than that. Right. Well, Liv was struggling though early that year, so I thought the briefcase was perfect for her at that time like because that it was like a, bump. It, 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 I was gonna say last hope, but I, that's nicer. And then it's last hope because it's still a struggle. <laughs> it's not really a struggle. Like, look where Liv Morgan her, was pre winning the briefcase, and then when she yeah. wins the briefcase, she has two mm-hmm. high profile matches with Ronda Rousey. She mm-hmm. has a high profile match with Shayna Baszler at Clash at the Castle. She's elevated to where she also becomes a tag team champion. And that's from last money in the bank where we weren't even considering Liv to be a champion. And now she became a right, SmackDown I, women's champion absolutely. and a tag team champion in less than a year. I could say a top gal. Like, honestly. Well, that solidify run? her as a mm-hmm. top gal, I think, because it was that slow burn. And then she wins the briefcase. And finally, I, it also, like, puts you in the championship picture. Because let's be real. Nikki ASH ain't being champion without the briefcase. Like mm-hmm. you know, like so, stuff but like why that. is that the case? Why is that? Why is it though? Why is that the case though? In your opinion, because it's all about how you get there. So Nikki Ash wasn't competing with Charlotte at that time, like in in, in any level. You know, well, we know she's a great wrestler, but fans weren't convinced that she's going to be the next champion. When you give her the briefcase, now you're rooting for her. Now she's in contention, whether we think it or not. So now I'm looking at her like, okay, this is could be a potential future champion. Next night, she is a champion. Now Nikki Asich can say she's a former world champion. And I don't I feel the same way about Liv Morgan. Her so. superhero, yeah, you know, I don't see her. I exactly, I don't see Liv Morgan becoming a champion without the briefcase. But it's right. the end of a slow build that gives her that extra, you know, that extra boost. I guess like Royal Rumble. I feel like the Royal mm-hmm. Rumble winner should be someone that's normally not in the championship picture because mm-hmm. then right. now you have that opportunity. So it's like that next like level. Like that's like Charlotte winning the briefcase. Charlotte doesn't oh, have yeah. no Charlotte issue being briefcase. in the championship <laughs> picture. Like you know what I mean, like why would that was why like John you when John Cena won the briefcase? I was like, do you really need this, my guy? Like you're a 15 time champion. You didn't need it. So I definitely feel like Charlotte's in the same boat. I just mm-hmm. people that just don't need it. And John Cena is a two-time winner, right? John Cena, no. So. Remember, the money in the bank they had, they put both titles on the line, and he won both titles. This was the same oh, that... with the authority. Okay. 
I thought. Yeah. He, well, I thought. All right. Yeah. That well, that was just to get the Lesnar though. Like right. that's all that was, just the transition to Lesnar. Right. Because if no. in other words, if they was trying to build forward, it would have been Romans. But did John Cena really need it though? To to build to the story they were telling. I'm yeah. not not that he was the I'm only person that wasn't no. gonna get hurt. I'm not that. I'm talking about the time they had all for future former world champions. Yes. No, you're not the money in the uh, the first money in the bank uh, he won, uh, the way he won, he cashed in on CM Punk. You think oh. he needed that? No, yeah, no, he didn't need it, but that was also to keep punk elevated. That was an attempt to keep punk and there solidify were plenty of him times. as a main He's John event. Cena. He's John Cena. That that it doesn't make sense to me. I'm with Pat on the I feel like no, money I, in the banks uh, me and too. Royal rumbles. Yeah. So that's why I say those don't make those type of things don't make sense to me. Like, why is John Cena in a match competing for the for the World Heavyweight Championship, you've been there 15 times. It didn't make sense to me either that Randy Orton was in the same boat with him. Sheamus made sense because Sheamus has only had it once, once or twice. He only so had I mean, one of each of the titles. Can't win now. Sheamus no, if that's wanted. not what I'm <laughs> saying. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm no, I'm saying just saying, is, like, we talk about moving people up because right. like, in, in this case, then Zelina or Zoe Stark, would, in my opinion, would, or EO would be the best right. winner. Right. Like, I feel like if anybody's a for all the former champions in there are buffers. Let's be real, because the buffer in it is that in order to get to the top, you have to beat the top. Becky, Trish, mm-hmm. Bailey, the top. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. In that match. And just like with the men. So that's you have three tops and you have three amateurs, including Logan Paul. But it doesn't what will never make sense to me. And and it would kind of go against what I'm saying with Trish, I think because I'm in awe with Trish. For her to nostalgically, she's never had money in the bank. Like yeah. it would be nostalgic for her, but is it really needed? No, and it wasn't needed for John Cena either, because John Cena can just say, "Oh, I'm here. I'm buff. I want a title match." Boom, it's given to him in any type of standard, any type right. of way. But however, they make him jump through the hoops, he's going to get that opportunity, and we've seen that. Even for him to end up in that match, we saw that. So, I like the aspect of it. It needs to be somebody different. Mm-hmm. Now, if Charlotte does end up winning the title from Oscar. Mm, <laughs> she better, like I said, hot tell your ass out the arena after the match. Don't She's stand there and wait to get cashed in. Sneak through the back door. Sneak through the back door. Run through the crowd. Pull the CM Punk. Blow a kiss at the ref and walk out. But here's the, the, here's the issue thing with Charlotte. And I was gonna go back to the Nikki um, ASH thing because Sienna was on a great point, which is like what happens after they win the title. Right. And it speaks to the per like the ones that haven't cashed in on Charlotte end up in better spots. Alexa Bliss, Liv Morgan. Versus the one that cashes in on Charlotte. And that's been the conundrum that WWE's faced because it's always like Charlotte gets cast in. Cool. But then Charlotte has to always get her lick back. And mm-hmm. it's usually like in the next pay-per-view, which is usually SummerSlam. This is how Carmella loses all her steam because Carmella loses that triple threat. Charlotte wins the title. Becky turns heel. And now it's Charlotte and Becky. But we forget about Carmella. Nikki right. A.S.H. loses that title in the triple threat at SummerSlam. All of a sudden, we don't care about Nikki A.S.H. in the title picture again. Mm. They don't think they're about Nikki Ash in the title picture because she was Nikki Ash. Right, and then, I think about it. Briefcase did everything it could possibly do, with, and after that, it's kind of like you know how they're booked. Bailey but is I the feel exception. Like the moment is needed. Bailey's the exception because then Bailey's like something with me has to change because why do I always come up against this fucking albatross of Charlotte that I can never get over? And right. that's where we get the heel chains, get rid of the fucking Bailey buddies. <laughs> I'm tired of losing Charlotte. Yeah, that was a moment. The side pony. She was like, you know how hard it is to rock a side ponytail. I'm almost thirty. I said, damn. Really, <laughs> to hell with these kids, bro. And these fun but going through it, playing that to hell with them kids. When she came out with that knife, started flashing buddies. Screw I was you. dying. I was crying. I was sitting there. Um, I was in there in she tears, ready. laughing. Man. But yeah, but Moment. think about Moment. all the times Moment. every half of those caches that we saw. What was it? Yeah, three to one on Charlotte and the rest were more on other people. That's I don't want to see the same. I'll be real honest with you. Somebody cashing on Oscar. <laughs> be, that's where I'm at. Like, somebody, or if you wait, to cash or just on, wait a little bit. Or just, you know, like, bit, don't, you it's no, titles. like, let's let it, like, ride to where we have yeah. some teases. You know, they could cash in on, like, different champions. Like, there's so much like, that they can do when you let hold the briefcase. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, let's let the story change a little bit. Like, I don't see, like, it, it, and it goes every green against me. I love my girl, Shar Shar, but I don't think she's winning this Sunday. 
I don't. In my fair opinion, I don't think she's I winning. Hope I think not. Oscar, I Oscar owe her some winning. receipts. For uh, yeah, for Oscar's sake, I Man. think this run the she should not. The receipt said Oscar owes Charlotte, Charlotte is longer than the yeah. CBS receipt. Right. Hello. And if she loses to lost to Rhea, then she could lose to Oscar. Mm-hmm. Right. Like let like yeah. Um, I have a question. Did you guys like? We talked about it a little bit with our Dana Brooke appreciation night, but did you guys like the pandemic Money in the Bank one, the corporate one where it was in the WWE headquarters? Hmm. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! This was my, <laughs> this was my yeah. favorite Money in the Bank match that I wow. for this because of the simple Ooh. fact of think of the think of the circumstances. We're here in a fucking pandemic. We can't go outside. There's a lot <laughs> of like terrible things happening. And they're like, all right, we got to give you money in the bank because this is our big five pay-per-view, but we got to spice this up because this is a fucking pandemic. How do we make this happen? Boom. We have an idea. Let's do this at Titan Tower. Wait, what? You're about to have the money in the bank match at Titan Tower. Yes. And we're going to have both the men's and women's go simultaneously at the same fucking time. And it's cool. And the reason why I picked this is because this was entertaining at a time that we needed it. This was a highly... Anticipate because they had a lot of star power in both these matches too. You have Oscar, you have so you have Daniel Bryan, you have AJ Styles, you have Rey Mysterio, stuff like that. So you have stars, but then it's also the fact of we don't. A lot of us will never get to see Titan Tower. So this is like our way of like, shit. What the hell does go on in that building other than <laughs> fans office that we haven't seen? It? Like what's in there? And the cool thing was because of you have the men's and women's matches going simultaneously and they're going through different floors. They're going through the lobby. You get to see the gym. Oh, this is the gym that Vince has always worked out on that I've heard these these midnight workouts. Cool. Midnight you, can workouts. See the, you get the moment in Vince's office where Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles are fighting and Vince is sitting behind his desk and just like gets up and just like, wait, what the fuck? And then they like, oh shit, we're here. Yo, put the chair back. Put the chair back. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nice T Rex thing. Sorry. <laughs> like at on. one point they were you, in the elevator. They mm-hmm. went through an it elevator. Was like, <laughs> they went through the fucking like food area. You get to watch Baron Corbin commit double homicide off of a fucking roof by throwing Rey Mysterio and no. Alistair Black off a roof. Really? Like, it never gets explained. Like so, <laughs> the laws in Connecticut are if it's during a Money in the Bank match, we can commit homicide. Cool. Where the like, Connecticut. The purge of WWE Titans sound like what the heck was going on? Oh. That and was funny. Then with Oscar winning the women's money in the bank and having that iconic moment, Brian had the photo up of her just screaming. And mind you, this is at a time where we didn't know what was going to happen with it. Oscar. Oscar was doing the dancing stuff, and we were like, "Yo, we love." We don't know what the hell's going on with Oscar, but we're starting to love this dancing thing and her just dancing and prancing around. But where are we going with her? Well, answer solved. And then for AJ to fumble a golden opportunity and basically throw it in Otis's hands where Otis, remember, that, Otis was hot going into this I, year. When for I tell Otis you, to win the fucking money in the bank and then to that culminate so that is just like, this was a highly entertaining match from start to end. They give you spots. You get Dana winning a false briefcase to where Stephanie's like, yo, get it from the fucking <laughs> desk. What are you doing? <laughs> Yo, how crazy that was, was that? So Yo, that fumble, that was the biggest. I think that's what made it good because that was something no one saw coming. Like, first of all, AJ, you were veteran. How the fuck do you fuck that up? And the secondly, I didn't realize how many people were hot on Otis until the money in the bank. Because people were like excited for him to actually go cash in, actually him go with him. I was like, yo, people like them some Otis, they like for real, for real. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he was on Mandy fire at this over. point. With like, that, Mandy was Mandy. coaching him on. I said, they like him for now real, Keith. for real. Now, Keith. <laughs> yo. It was good. It was worth it. I en- I really enjoyed it. I like that they got creative. I liked all the cinema matches that you- during the pandemic, like the ones at Mania. I thought was, mm-hmm. I-, I really liked. Um, at WrestleMania 36, that was Gargano cool. and Ciampa was like the MVPs. Oh God, they were, <laughs> dude. When I tell you, like people, and then people were so sad when that whole trilogy ended. But I'm like, you have to understand, there's so much history between the two of them, and I'm glad. And it, it, you think about it too, the pandemic was really the rise of NXT. Mm-hmm. Like it really, it really gave NXT some numbers to the point where now, like, I remember watching Carmelo Hayes' first match during then. I remember being high on, I remember when they introduced Roxanne Perez. I remember all mm-hmm. of that. Like the women's tag team titles, I think, got introduced at that time. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. It was a lot of great things happening. Oh, for sure. Maybe we'll do a fan club on like our favorite pandemic um, Thunderdome moments because it'll mm. be fun to look back on that. Um, and also, AW Dynamite is on, of course. We watch as a family. So turn it on and chop it up. Let us know the good stuff. So I was shocked to hear that Mox didn't bleed at Forbidden Door. <laughs> oh, first time ever. And, yeah. But you know who took all the blood from them? Free and Kenny Omega and uh, Will Oof. Allspring took all of his, his blood in one mm. setting. That's what happened. Yeah. And I knew that was going to happen because Justin will tell you, that's like the John Cena and Randy Orton of mm. that wrestling of that wrestling side of the world. Like, for them to take from what they did in New Japan Pro Wrestling to bring it to AEW, and it was like, it felt like a match that was forever, but it was like nail-biting. Like, I really, for a moment, I thought Kenny had it, but then I was like, no, Will got to get his lick back because you came and talked all that mess across the pond when he was holding down, and we talking about pandemic. Will Ospreay made himself more, he upped his game. He became his own Seth Rollins during the pandemic. So for somebody to come in with a, with a Roman Reigns personality and say, I'm going to beat you and then beat you, that had to eat away at him. And they took his title. Like they mm-hmm. basically treat that title to each other. They treat it like <laughs> there's like there's two brothers fighting over a toy. Mm-hmm. So I, when I see you with it, I want it. When I when I have it, you gonna want it. So we gonna just have to go back and forth. And when I tell you that was a blood spot, that was a blood sport. Ooh. Blood spot sport. It was good. I heard it was a good pay per view. It was good. all in all though. Was, I don't know about yeah. the pay per view, but that match was on point. <laughs> it was. It was uh, the wonder... best show of the year. Uh, oh, say they, did, they show, did numbers, but it's it's very good. I won't say I best think they did numbers. I still think Revolution's better because that's start to end like fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's go back to Money in the Bank. I want to laugh. So can we talk about some of the failed cash ins? <laughs> We're looking at you, Corbin. Corbin? Or was no, this... he went back to Lone he went to back to Lone Wolf Corbin? Okay. And his, who did um, he fail match. cash in on again? Gender. <laughs> This was at yeah. the time where Baron started letting his mouth fly on Twitter and let his Twitter fingers speak for himself. And especially, I think it was responding to a Dave Meltzer mm-hmm. tweet, which again, mm-hmm. why are you giving Meltzer any attention? But apparently, this got him in some hot water with management. Oh, yeah, man. I think that's what I think that's what led to his downfall was yeah. answering that because so, you don't do that. This is when Gender was champion, and Corbin tried to sneak cash in on Gender, and Gender still got that ass one, two, three in like five seconds. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was Austin Theory losing to Seth Rollins, but just worse because it was like at least Austin Theory got like at least a little bit of a match versus Corbin was like thirty seconds or less. Oh God! Oh damn! So I guess you, like to your point before, Siendo, like it's not always <laughs> the best thing. You know who piss, oh. you know who pisses me off till this day. Oh, till this day, piss me off. Oh. Oh. John Cena in that motherfucking briefcase. <laughs> it's gonna piss me off because why? A, what happened? You didn't. He didn't fucking need it. That's why he didn't need it. Then he goes all noble at 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 Monday Night Raw's something something anniversary. I will success and nobody wants to hear this shit. Like you're supposed to catch CM Punk when he down. You're supposed to like you. you listen, this is why I always believe that faces do not deserve the Money in the Bank briefcase. I always believe that. I always used to say that. Like, I mm-hmm. feel like it's the it's the most healed thing you could do to take a briefcase and kick somebody when they're down, right? Like, you give it to a face, it's going to waste your fucking time. I like, don't just think waste so, though. your time. I don't C- think so. When CM Punk had it, he had a solid run as a face and cashing in. But what made it even better was when he followed up the next year and did it and then said, oh, but y'all loved it when I was a good guy but, being a little but pawn. You see... But you see where that is, right? He was like, I wanted to be World Heavyweight Champion. And when I was World Heavyweight Champion, y'all took that away from me. But now we got second go around. And y'all think that y'all just going to be kumbaya with me when y'all was kicking me when I was down? Call y'all. That's where most of it, Mm -hmm. 
it pissed me off with John Cena. It just pissed me off. Like it would have even made me happier if John Cena had came at like the end of the match and had been like, "You think you're, you think you're the top guy, blah blah." blah. You know what? Mm-hmm. Let's have this match right here, right now. But you all know John Cena is a golden boy. He wasn't going to do none of that. So shit. did that you did you like off. when RVD had it? No, I didn't like when RVD. No, actually, let me take that. He back. He called a shot. Let me take that back. I'm an R- I'm an RVD fan, so I can't. Mm. <laughs> That's gonna another be my one moment. I feel like he deserved it. I feel like he did it. I feel like he did it for the homies in ECW. I think he did it for the one time, one time. He did it for Pauly, like Jack, like like New Jack would call him Pauly. So mm-hmm. leave him out of it. Here's another one. Big E. Big E wins it. He teases that cash in with Roman by fucking with Heyman for months, calls his shot, <laughs> gets it off Lashley. That was a baby face. That was I didn't like. Face, yeah. I didn't like his. Uh, we we actually talked about that earlier. I didn't like his um, him calling the shot on Twitter because it it just took something away. You know, like granted, I understand it from a rating standpoint. You know, this is going to start a Monday Night Football, so they wanted you know the attention. But it was just like, come on! It would have been to me. It would have been better for him to just cash in on Lashley, and we wouldn't have seen it coming. And I think that's the parts that I always that enjoy part. about the Money in the Bank because. You could just be sitting there. You could, in some cases, be like, all right, is this show almost over? Then you realize the music hits. Like, oh, wait, somebody got the briefcase. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you now you're adrenaline rushing, and you watch them cash in, and one, two, three, now you up. And you want to, like, get on Twitter and tweet. But, like, that's the thing, that thrill. And that's what I felt Big E didn't get a chance to do, you know. And but Yeah. I'm glad you brought up Big E because when I heard that talking about, like, faces and stuff. and. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's just that moment that it finally, I hate using the word deserve, but it gives people that moment, like fan favorites like Big E, like us being in, me and Siendo were together at the bar when he won the briefcase. Mm-hmm. I didn't see him winning. I was I was not particularly like, oh my yeah. God. But then we were he just won, like, I was watching. like, oh my God. We were just like watching and supporting him at all because this was, remember, this is the first time for a long time it was no New Day, no Kofi, mm-hmm. no Xavier. This was just Big E letting it cook for him to have this opportunity. Um, and it was also off the high of Kofi winning his first championship. So we were just sitting there at the bar and she was just like, you know, imagine like, if he won? I was like, you know what? Maybe he got it. And then he wins and we're both like, wait, what? Like mm-hmm. it was just like though. Is that Xavier's like. path? Xavier Woods' path to no. the WWE World Heavyweight he Championship? Was, no, he doesn't have he's, a path. He's made it world. crystal. Y'all don't clear. think he'll be a champion? No, he's, I don't Xavier, see him as Xavier world Woods has made it clear on no multiple no platforms. Team. He doesn't want to be world champion. His thing mm-hmm. was King of the Ring. He always yes. wanted to win King of the they, Ring. He's like, King y'all two could be the world champ- heavyweight champions. I want King of the Ring. I've okay. always yeah. wanted that. I've been begging to get that pay-per-view back. And then when he got King of the Ring, that was the one where it's like, this is my fucking world title right here. Right. King Woods. Uh, agreed, agreed, agreed. So but you it speaks to something like, we talked about before, that, which is that everyone has to be champion. Right. So, Brian, you didn't like that Big E had tweeted it? Because I didn't either. Nah. Like, it, it, I'm all it, about it, the surprise element. Yeah, shout out to Ben. He brought this up earlier because we actually did like a snake draft of our uh, best, worst, and people we want to see win it. And that was the thing. It's just like with Big E, it was just, like I said, the surprise factor. I get it from a TV rating standpoint, but the thing is you want to be surprised when you you hear that music. Because, like, I mean, there's probably been plenty of times you might have been watching a show and then it goes up so long that you actually forget that somebody actually has a chance to win the briefcase. Like, they have in the briefcase. Can I ask everybody what they think about Braun Strowman's win? <laughs> Braun's? <laughs> I, I actually didn't hate it. He was it, me before but and after. He was a Nikki Bra- A.S.H. Braun's got it's ruined. It, it, it honestly... About Nikki A.S.H. Justin! <laughs> wow. I actually cared about Nikki A's age. Braun! Guess what? Yeah. No! I, did, what I, I think Braun's that. got ruined by Roman's leukemia. Uh, fair. Let me be real. Because I but think. People, but you know what? People weren't. People are mixed when it comes to him, anyways. And I think they what their thought process was this would help, but it didn't. I think it, it would. He would have. Would, I would think he would have eventually turned heel. And right. either cash in on Roman or somebody. I just think like it was like, oh shoot, we panicking now. Call Lesnar. 
Right. Let's, we 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 gotta go. We're going over to see the prince over there. He wants a big money matchup. So Braun and Lesnar, Braun, you cashing in. You know, you're automatically number one contender. And you know what's funny? We talk about same day cash ins. Mm -hmm. Alexa's Bliss's cash in was the same night, right? Mm -hmm. Because the whole disqualification thing. Carmelo's the only one that goes longer than 24 hours. The other right. and Oscar is different. Everyone else time. cashes in the same night or next night. Alexis yeah, I hope night. they do. I hope they hold on to it a little bit longer. Yeah. I remember being it's curious cute. when Alexa won it. I was can like, we talk about? We just went um, through two fucking years of her champion. We're now giving her the briefcase yeah. so she can be champion again. I was just like, uh, but then no, I, I like her I, being. I like when she became champion multiple times because she was another person that they used to they used to always underestimate. Like yeah, I felt like her and AJ Lee were in the same boat. Like they used to underestimate the both of them <laughs> being champions more than once. And they went on to be champions more than once. I will True. throw Braun Strowman some bail because I know I just made fun of him. I'll throw him some bail. That I'm not finished with you shit got over like fucking Rover. And there was a time where people really did fuck with Braun Strowman. So putting a briefcase mm -hmm. on him and putting a title on him actually did make sense for a time. The problem mm -hmm. was that time was very limited because then when Braun's champion, then what? And that was the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So I want to talk about somebody that won it and it was a huge shock and it goes to the points we were making before about whether or not somebody like needs this opportunity. Um, do y'all remember when Brock randomly came back and won the briefcase? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, when I say that was one of the probably that set wrestling Twitter on fire, yeah, I would say that's probably a, that. one of the top 10 moments because, uh, you know. I I can't. I didn't catch that. That night, I did a post show and I laughed at the IWC for this one. Like, I started to show up just laughing because it was so funny to see him do that. You know, now it sucked what, what happened, but it was just so <laughs> funny to see the way he just like cashed, uh, you know, took that briefcase. You never saw it coming. Poor Ali. Everybody said he was supposed to win. I still oh, have a hard time believing that. Um, but... <laughs> no. Yeah, like... I don't... They weren't ready for him. Right. Ali right. right. wasn't ready. <laughs> uh, you know. Not, Why are you He's so dumb? I mean, because she said Brock Lesnar win a briefcase. What I think. I was like, man, how many fucking unlimited white privilege cards does Brock Lesnar hold? And ah! he's just like, I'm playing this right now. I'm getting that briefcase. What's anyone going to say to me? I'm Brock fucking Lesnar. I double dare to come try to fight me. And it's like... You got a big chief, but at the same time, like we got boombox Brock. I think that's what it was called when mm -hmm. he was like it was. It was funny because he knew that everybody was gonna hate him for it. He knew everybody was gonna be upset, so he kind of was just. And he's also like, I what was, was that? Shit was, that the, was that was, the wreck shit and leave Brock Lesnar error? Like basically. I'm coming to fuck shit up. Okay, then I mm, think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then it, and then it made it worse because I mean, it's like we wanted Seth as champion, we wanted Kofi as champion, and Brock's about to fuck this up because we know Brock's not I, gonna fail his cash in. That was the of, perfect reset for Seth, though losing yeah, to Brock and then getting it back because woo, was, he was that was wait, not a Seth Rollins we talk about, was it though? Because even though he wins it back, then he goes to the fiend, and then but he wasn't the man's man, but, no more. yeah. Oh, I hate the man's man, You're right. <laughs> That he wasn't so, he wasn't Becky Lynch's was man so no great. more. That's what everybody was trying to gear them away from. I think that's why they did that to kind of gear the separate the two of them because they were great when they were together, but like they're even better apart. They de accomplish totally so right. fucking much apart, and mm -hmm. it's great be together backstage. Yeah. And speaking of those champions in 2019. Vince McMahon, this is for you. We ain't fucking forget what you did to Kofi Kingston in that eight second oh, bullshit. Come on, the, the, the receipt will be paid. We, we don't even talk about that. We don't. That we don't. We don't. The way we don't talk about Bruno, we don't talk about that. Okay. Yo, a, a receipt will be paid, sir. So we, we don't talk about undercards, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do it. Because because there was a match today that I was watching. I forgot this was actually a banger, and that was AJ Lee and Caitlyn. From Money in the Bank 2013, Ooh. so this was the um, this is the only Money in the Bank I've actually like been to in person, um, and you know watching those two go at it like the month before, like at this time during this era is when Impact 
the knockouts division is setting everything on fire yeah to the point it's almost like they're getting wwe's attention like yeah you know what we need to start doing something you know what i mean we wasn't going to the divas revolution yet but clearly like these two ladies could go and it was like let's not focus on their assets and let's focus on their actual wrestling and so um I was like just sitting there watching the match while I was like working and I was like wow like they were going at it so that's definitely a match if y'all get some ch- a chance this week go back and check out Caitlin and AJ Lee at Money in the Bank 2013 yeah you know what's crazy she, about that match go ahead Sandal the AJ's book she describes that the way they were able to make all that work is because they literally like creative had no plan for them to have that match whatsoever and mm-hmm. Vince same thing he kind of didn't know and they were just like let us come with it and there was one writer in the room that was just like all right i'll work with you to tell this story and they were able to make the match work because they were able to pilot their own creativity plus it's like when you're wrestling your friend Mm -hmm. i'm gonna whoop your ass for fun like Mm -hmm. they were both happy for each other and then on top of that like you're very correct i remember people used to watch raw for the men and then if it was impact on at the same time you were flipping the impact to watch like the velvet sky and brooke test and i talk about every every country man's favorite woman od odb fight for the title fight the in the knockouts division because the knockout division was hot mm-hmm. like and they had co- they had kind of the same storyline going but what they did they had consistency they didn't they didn't have us they didn't have like five minute matches and it was it they had storylines they had beef with each other they had them doing promos all the things you saw start to come back up with the divas Mm -hmm. the impact was doing already so when aj and and caitlin had this storyline and was given dialogue and was given promo to each other it was like a match it was like a match made like that match doesn't get enough credit so i completely agree with you that was a good money in the bank moment it was. And it's funny because I was going to mention what AJ Lee talks about in the book and the oppor- how they capitalized on the opportunity because this is a big show. That was, I'm glad you brought that up. And it makes me hate that they don't mention AJ Lee because that, it was a long term rivalry, a long term storyline. Mm-hmm. They worked on it. Their styles complemented each other in like so many different ways. So yeah, I think I'm, I'm definitely going to rewatch that uh, at then- some point. Yeah, th- people forget too. AJ was one of the mm-hmm. first divas since I think since Michelle McCool or Lake Cool had Mickey James had merchandise that got merchandise that exact same time. Like no diva had merchandise. Kelly Kelly hadn't had anything. Eve Torres didn't have anything. The Bellas mm-hmm. didn't have anything. She was one of the first divas in a long time to get merchandise. Mm-hmm. After yep. her, before her win, that that to me. For her, not it wasn't a money in the bank win, but for her to have that happen for her, that's a big deal. Huge. And it catapulted for and it, so and that's why ways. I also hate when people don't mention her because look at who started getting merged slowly then afterwards. Who oh, mm-hmm. you know? Think Ooh. about it. Caitlin started getting merch at that time. Mm. Um the Bella's merch started showing up. Like Natty had changed the um, she had changed, she had like a formula, she had like changed the Bret Hart, and that was a shirt for a while. I think I have that shirt actually. Um, I know AJ had like a lot of variations of the shirt, she had a lot of variation of her like Black Widow shirt, but like, yeah, yeah. the Bella started getting merch at that time. Um, it started a catapult, like, it really did like light a little bit of a match in the revolution. And I just hate that she's not mentioned. In my why opinion, isn't she we totally mentioned different. more? Is that like we a know company why. thing, or no? Because of who she dealt with, and it kind of just it's one of those things that just got ran with. Like right. it's more of less of because of what happened with Punk. They also don't mention her, I guess. So she gets punished for it too. Well, she got well. She didn't really get punished because if you like, mind you, when divas used to leave, they used to get fired or have I quit. Like, even when Vicky left, Vicky got Vicky had to leave in a mud I quit match. But AJ got to just quietly retire because of everything legal. I think that was go- everything legal that was going on. 
Like it's not every day you marry a husband, you get served wedding, pa- you get served legal papers from your job to yeah, your I remember, husband. I remember that. I just didn't um, know she's become persona non grata, where it's like we don't mention her stuff on WWE. It's like, yeah, I mean, what did that I want to say they don't mention it. Watch four they don't tell her, her story. Yeah, 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 like we don't, don't they don't tell her story. Like when you talk about the women's evolution, like it's more centered around like Paige, like kind of mm-hmm. beating her that night, and then they kind of like move on. Um, but what are some other money in a bank pay per view matches that you guys oh. look to see and enjoy? Johnson, <laughs> in Chicago. Facts. Ooh. Siendo, <laughs> you want to go first? Banga. Nothing but Banga. First of all, this man literally got to tell Vince McMahon, like, first of all, you come off a sitting on Indian style on a stage telling everybody mm-hmm. what you think about them. He didn't, he, and he didn't just go off on the company. He went off on the fans for being fickle, which is what mm-hmm. the ICW has been saying for years about their own fan base is that they're fickle. He goes off on, like, their fake support and how long he's been doing and how great he know he is, how he deserves this big chance. And then, like, I, like you find out that he was quitting – and then he gets pulled back in. He signs his contract, but on the in in that whole spectrum of that, he was really about to walk the hell. He's really about to quit. That was really so his he, last night. He was doing it wearing a uh, a Stone Cold shirt, right? Like he was I really like it. really about to walk out the same way that Stone Cold. Hey, hey thank you. Yeah. Shout out to yeah. 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 Shout out King to Lenny. the building. And but you he, know, oh, go ahead. But to me, it's just like. He was literally about to walk out. Like he was like, I'm done with this. He walks out. Stone Cold, you, Stone Cold did the same thing. A lot of people didn't get the Stone Cold shirt. Stone Cold had pretty much walked out over the same kind of concerns Punk did mm-hmm. back in the day. The first time that scene, the first time that Stone Cold had walked out, it was over the same type of shit. But then for CM Punk to get up and do that, and people, and he was like, when he saw the reactions and stuff, he was really concerned because he has this love for the business. He was going to walk out, but he was just tired of the way things were. And he was like, listen, in my hometown, I'm taking that belt. I'm walking out. I'm going home. Your company will not have a belt. And there's nothing you can do about it because it ain't not for nothing. That belt is worth money. That ain't no cheap ass belt for you to go sit home and say, I'm going to go home, put it in my fridge and call it a night. Like they and they did everything in their power to stop him for for John Cena to play in that role and be like, listen, for him to knock out John Laurinaitis, that was the best part because he was like, we're not doing it this way. We're not. This match is gonna get called yeah, they down. They definitely the tried to do the MS job. Yes, um, like even threaten his job. Well, see, and here's the thing, right? So I remember this is this is the um, first summer of the wrestling realm, right? So. Because I'm doing podcasting, like for the first time, like I'm like my way of learning was listening to a bunch of other internet radio shows and stuff. So I'm listening to like I'm like this had everybody in a chokehold, yeah. especially the Saturday before that Money in the Bank. I mean, every show like I could listen to, I was listening to, and every insider was saying that they kept this under wraps. You did not, they did not want the finish leaking. They didn't want anybody to know anything. And this is like back when Facebook, like groups was a big thing. Right. Everybody was like, yo, is Punk going to win? Is Cena going to win? How is it going to happen? Put <laughs> um, <laughs> 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 your shades on, Letty. Put yeah. the shades on. These studio so lights like, are blinding. Right. So everybody, nobody could figure out mm-hmm. what exactly was going to happen and i remember um you know shout out to my late uncle mike watching this with him and just like me him my cousin like my heart racing because i want to see like if john cena was like okay cool but i wanted to see punk win because i wanted to know was he really going to take the championship and go home and you remember like he wins the match and then Vince man's like like cendo mentioned john Laurinaitis got knocked out by cena gets gts one two three and then Vince McMahon goes right there, gets the headset, like, Del Rio, get out here now. Because Del Rio... It forces it does, him to cash on yeah, the Yeah, he forces him to night. cash. <laughs> but <Yo. laughs> because Punk kicked him. He kicked him before the bell could ring. The cash in was no only void. But that's what was so funny, because it was like... And it, it wasn't like, yeah, Del Rio was a heel, but he wasn't a Vince McMahon guy. But he was going to depth of, I need to save my company, because right. he's going to do what I thought. Bret Hart was going to do 
and right. leave with the title. Right. And mm-hmm. people don't get the significance of that. Like Punk literally did what Brett should have done if he hadn't gotten screwed. Let's be real about it. And then I, there's one, there's Brett only a screwed? few. Yeah, that happened apparently, allegedly. Anyway, but like Wow, it wasn't consensual. Four, <laughs> so <laughs> so the the thing I will never forget, and Brian touches it, all that happened. And when I saw that, when I saw him Del Rio get kicked like that, the look <laughs> on Vince's yeah. face, the oh shit that was on that man's face when Punk hot that guardrail, and he all he could do, all Vince could do, because he wasn't gonna touch the man. The man don't work for you no more. Can't even touch him. Was <laughs> blow that kiss and say sayonara <laughs> to this to this five figure piece of gold that I'm about mm-hmm. to go home with. In my hometown, you can't follow me. I don't work for you. Not like you could show up to my goddamn house and come get this belt. Sayonara, my guy. You got to figure uh, this out on your and own. And mind you, this is what he was still using the other theme is this before Cult of Personality. So, this, uh, this fire, what was it called? The this, fire bird. This fire, fire bird. bird. Kill switch. Yep. Yeah. And Chicago was hot that night. Cause like before he came out there, they was chanting CM Punk, CM Punk. And then when John Cena came out there, I believe they kept throwing the shirt back too, if I'm not they mistaken. Threw shirt back. Oh shit. They threw yeah, shirt it, back. It, it, it was like he didn't even run or nothing. He just walked out there. It was kind of like ECW and it made you it took you back to that. It was like if anybody can handle this, it's John Cena. Um right. but also just real quick in the promo, like you, you mentioned of the other companies, he was sitting there in uh cross, with his legs crossed saying, Maybe I'll defend it at Ring of Honor, maybe I'll take it to New Japan. And I remember everybody kept saying. TNA was sitting around like, just say our name, just say our name, just yell it once, <laughs> just to bring us some relevancy. Because at that time, it was like people now like it's it's respectable like TNA, but like that's what people used to shame during 2010, 11. If you said you watched TNA, the IWC was shaming you. It was like, oh, that ain't that sucks. And that was it was always fun to make fun of TNA. Now it's not. People were but, trying to gatekeep it back then. Yeah. Now now. But yeah, the 2011 but, Money in the Bank was great, even with uh, Christian and Randy Orton. You know, oh, yeah, um, that was good match. That 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 was uh, that was during the summer of Christian and Randy Orton. It's just that the summer of Punk. But this is like one of the times where Raw and SmackDown were both like going neck and neck, and it's because you had John Cena and Randy Orton. But Christian would win the World Championship by uh, clausing the contract. If Randy Orton got disqualified, then he would lose the title, and he he spit it was a Randy good story. Orton. Yeah, he spit in Orton's face, and that's when Orton kicked him. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, because you know what was funny? It was the, everybody was trying to say that you know Christian for all those years was playing good guy, but was still on Edge's shadow. So yep. Christian's whole mindset was all right. You want to see? You think that Edge is the only like the only ultimate opportunist? I taught him the game, so when he spit in his yeah. face. I was like, oh, he about to lose his shit. Uh-huh. And then it made him hell. Like even for what's the name to call it? Like Edge came out and he was like, "Listen, I took opportunity, but I was like, like I was proud of mine. You're being a whiny little bitch about it, and I can't yeah. support that." So <laughs> Edge called him out on his shit. Like Christian's whole I mean, he was run, fresh in the retirement too. Edge yeah, was. Christian's whole run is totally underestimated, mm-hmm. and that money in the bank, mm. that match between them proves it. It sucks because Christian's better than Edge in the ring. It's just that child, Edge is just a better you superstar. You don't go there, child, for the internet wrestling community to come for your ass, child. You I think they that. should know that by now. <laughs> they do, but it's called the Niles of River in Egypt. Like Wendy <laughs> Williams would say. Ooh. It's the Niles of River in Egypt. Oh, boy. That was funny. I haven't heard that in a minute. Uh, uh, can we talk about Shelton Benjamin? Because mm-hmm. Brian and um, Andre, I think, put it in the comments, too, about that first one, how he showed out. I can't believe how underrated he is. Like, he anytime he's enough. in the ring, it's so effortless, everything that he does, and he knows how to make people look good. I wish he had more opportunities. But do you guys remember that match? The first one. Was he in the first Money in the Bank or the second? 20, WrestleMania 21 and 22. No, the 22, the 21 he showed out in 22 when he did in 21 because he was like, first time, shame on me. Second time, I'm going to show y'all asses that I'm getting this briefcase. Because he showed, if you we watch that 22, because I remember it very vividly, the spots, <laughs> half the spots were his. Mm-hmm. Half of them. Wow, half yeah. of them. He was a personality away from being the WWE champion. 
Exactly. Really? But, I'm sorry, what? A personality away from being a world champion. If What's wrong with his personality now? What was wrong with his personality? What kept him from being a champion? Elaborate on that. What you mean? So, he can't. The lack he of personality is lack. Yeah, of that's what I said. He was a personality away. If he just had that, then he could have mm-hmm. been a world champion, you know. But you wasn't gonna be a champion with with, with Shawn Michaels and Triple H on the card. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he wasn't better than Booker mm-hmm. T uh, personality wise, and he had a hard time getting over because yeah. Triple H had a had a the title in a chokehold. Yeah. He would have had a better chance surprise. if he was smacking. Absolutely. Yeah. He's never won the briefcase, right? No. Ooh, Triple H, no. no. Imagine. Oh, so, <laughs> he was like, I wrote myself a contract. I mean, he recently won the world. Opportunity, opportunity, opportunity after opportunity after opportunity and doesn't need the fucking briefcase. Tri- mm-hmm. The game uh, with his wife uh, his briefcase. Uh, he won the no briefcase of life. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like owner of of everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Did no, we? Um, like he don't need it. Yeah, he doesn't. No, need it's it. like basically like sticking a pin in a fucking balloon and letting the air out. It's like <laughs> that was unnecessary, dude. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> just just pop the shit. <laughs> you know what I didn't yeah. like when randomly the Miz got um, Otis's Otis. briefcase. Yeah, like I yeah. like that. I love the Miz. I was happy for him, but I also just like I feel like it took a little bit away from Otis. It did. It took a you lot. Know, he had all that momentum. He won the briefcase, and then it was just like womp womp. I wish what? Otis didn't have the. I wish the pandemic didn't happen I, for obvious reasons, right? But I feel like Otis would have had came out better because he couldn't get that moment with Mandy Rose. That was supposed to be in front of, in Tampa, in front of the crowd, and everybody was gonna go crazy when he finally got the kiss. Yeah. Imagine him winning a briefcase in front of people. Then he would have either had a failed cash in, or he would have had like a legit cash in. But I ain't gonna lie, I hated it. I hate the way it went down. But I was happy when Miz was WWE champion again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I also think that Alpha Academy. I feel. I also feel like the whole Alpha Academy thing he has now with Gables, had that mm. happened in the pandemic, like a little close to the pandemic, mm. that shit would have, it would have culminated now and people would have been hooked on it because people have the nostalgia of the things that they watched during the pandemic happen now and the things that fizzled out aren't as relevant. Like, look at Roman Reigns' title reign. That shit went from literally starting in the pandemic to now. Mm. And look at how it, look at how illuminating it is. So that's my thought on that. Mm-hmm. Unpopular opinion. I'm a, I was a fan of Miz winning that briefcase off of Otis. And here's why. why? I have been saying this for fucking years, WWE. And WWE finally listened in some way, shape, or form. If you have the money in the bank briefcase, it's one thing to like tease, you know, cash ins and this and that. Make the motherfucker defend the damn briefcase. New Japan does this with G1, where the G1 Climax winner not only gets a chance to main event Wrestle Kingdom, they have to defend their briefcase against the people that they lost matches mm. at during the G1 Climax. So you have to defend your spot. That spot is not handed to you to where it's like, okay, you're automatically main eventing Wrestle Kingdom. No, defend it, defend your briefcase, and defend why you should main event. And there are times where people have lost that briefcase on the road to Wrestle Kingdom, but it, it gives whoever's holding that briefcase something to do in the meantime besides us waiting for a cash-in and waiting for your music to hit. So right. if you're the money in the bank holder, force them to defend it from time to time. And this is something that I've been begging W to do that they were not doing for years. And they finally did with Otis where you have this storyline where Miz kind of wants the briefcase. He's entangled with Otis. We're going to take it to some court to where Otis now has to defend his briefcase against Miz. Defend your spot. At the same mm-hmm. time, like Brian said, like that would have been Otis's time to be champion or have a field cash in or whatnot. But because there's no crowd... It doesn't hit the same, and you got to get that briefcase off Otis. How do you do it? Defend the briefcase. And that's something moving forward that we should do moving forward where Austin Theory, cool, you want the money in the big briefcase? Defend your briefcase. Why should you hold it? I beat you two weeks ago. Why don't we go heads up again, but now you got to put that briefcase on the line. And it gives that like person that. something to that. do. Yeah, I agree with that. that I, uh, 
Yeah, that would add like a spin to it. But even at that, I feel like it would be too complicated for people to try and emanate that formula. <laughs> I get what you're saying. You'd like you, but <laughs> Justin, WWE will fucking yeah, over you have to agree, over Justin, Japan. that like it works so perfectly in New Japan because I understand that concept there. I can't imagine a bunch of the, the people, especially people that are still there working under Vince that have not had like, have not changed ice cream flavors since Hulk Hogan was still relevant, understanding that concept and putting it together in their heads. I don't right. see it. It doesn't have to be weekly. It could be something sparingly or here and there. Like perfect example. Uh, let's say LA Knight wins the main bravery case this year. Mm -hmm. But let's say he gets into a blood feud with someone going into SummerSlam and stuff like that, that by the time you get to payback in Pittsburgh, now you have LA Knight versus said person, briefcases is on the line. Right. Right. And you can do Still it like that. Still think they're going to fuck that up some way, somehow, unfortunately. Yeah. I, I get your concept, but not going to be successful everywhere. Mm -hmm. I see. I hope this is not true just because the like, no, just now. Like, I feel like they need to win at least for like the first like 10 because it's still relatively new for the women we hear um you, let's talk Mange, about this i'm just gonna say real quick we hear you mange but at the same time like we've been complaining about can we have the women hold it longer than 24 hours now you want to already have like an unsuccessful cash in like that would kind of hurt someone with this momentum going forward like, not becky really hurt. becky oh. wouldn't get hurt she's like becky... a top top star yeah, if she won, it would be we would feel it was a waste of a, a briefcase, though. Mm -hmm. Right, that's true. That's a thousand percent true. Yeah, I yeah. I mean, if they hold it for a while and gives us stories around it and entertains us for the shows, then if they end up being unsuccessful, like hopefully it's not the worst thing in the world, and whoever that person is can make it work. Um, right. But I want to get into this year's Money in the Bank. It's in London. And I know a lot, lot of people that are going to be going. It, the crowd is going to be hot because they don't come oh, yeah. often. So, and they're getting this specialty match. They're getting the fucking bloodline civil war match. So the crowd is going to be all in. So we talked a little bit about the ladder matches, but I would like to talk about some of the other matches on the card. Uh, we could start with Civil War because I didn't think this would happen like so quick or maybe I'm just like so into it. I'm just like, I can't wait. <laughs> no, this needs to be the next chapter of the story because one or two things is going to happen. Someone's turning on somebody. Someone's turning on somebody. Really? Or this, somebody's turning on somebody. I don't know if it's Sokoa. I doubt it's Sokoa. Don't know if Roman Reigns is going to say fuck all y'all and just walk out of the match where level he's at. But I think this is starting to be the calm before a bigger storm. And that's people waiting for Reigns to drop this title. Now, what I don't see what happening, a lot of people are trying to say that it might be Jay versus Roman at SummerSlam. I feel like I'm one of the only people that does not see that happening. Hmm. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I don't see Jay having that, like he's back with his brother. It's just him and his brother the way it was before he kind of became, before he got, got entitled with this bloodline with Roman during the pandemic. He's not going to just drop it just to get a championship title. It wouldn't make sense. So I don't think that's happening anytime soon. I do think it's a level of calm before we do see Roman lose this title or in the street because he's already hit the pinnacle of the street. Then he just beat um Paige Morales. Who did he just beat? Pedro as? Morales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just yeah beat but, him. And Bruno uh one of Bruno's reigns is no um back when, no it's Bruno one of Bruno's it, reigns is within reach. Right. So that's it, it it give it a little bit what you need one more he needs one more month to hit that pinnacle. No, nah, I think about another two hundred days. 200 days later. I think we're starting to see the slow I think we're starting to see the wind down of the the of his reign and like coming to an end mm. but I think this is the beginning because yeah. the, the the fall what's been keeping this reign in its tact as many people want to say is just Roman is his family he's the head of the table you don't challenge the head of the table 
You don't go against the head of the table in any way, shape, or form. You don't question the head of the table. Now the two people that were a part of your, that were keeping your fraction intact, they're against you. So I think this is, I think this storyline is going to be a great buffer. I don't know who's going to win, which is what makes me excited for it. But I think this, I think no matter what happens in this match, this is going to be where, okay, this is, this could be the end of Roman Reigns, like historic reign. No matter what. You know who I see turning soon? And and it may not happen like Saturday, but I feel like Paul Heyman's going to be the one to get mixy. Like, I think, and that's going to be kind of, and this idea of like it becoming a fatal four way, even if not this Saturday, but at some point, uh, it's just, it's only the beginning, yo. Like, it, it, so much can happen from this match. I don't see anyone winning. I think it's going to end in some sort of, like, nonsense because yeah. I don't see either side winning. Right. And I agree with you, Siendo, where the Usos are never just going to be able to go back to being the Usos because now they're in this civil war. Like, nothing was the same. Right. So I'm here for it. I know they're going to get a good amount of time. It's definitely going to be an event. <gasps> Yeah, I'm hyped. What's up, Tell us what's going on Impact oh. Cry. No, I thought my, I thought I lost y'all. Like I heard y'all, but then I was like, my my computer went black, but I hit the um wrong button because I'm you making. Us. I'm sorry. I'm not watching. I'm not watching. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> no, nah, nah. but you know what though? I do think that. So yeah, word on the street is what I love is they doing all this in a secret location, and that's what's so beautiful about this because we don't know nothing. And I'm excited. I think, I think Solo gets pinned, and I think that causes some irritation with right. uh, with Roman. I think that causes some irritation. But um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, this is Different. we're at war. <laughs> by the line, right. but I still roll with the Tribal Chief. Make no mistake about it. We're glad so for me, I'm here for everybody. <laughs> so for me, this is something that we we've seen it coming. We've known this is coming since after WrestleMania when the Usos lost and Roman stopped taking their calls. And all of a sudden, Heyman's like, "Yo, jump on the jet, go rest and stuff like that." Roman's gonna come out here with Solo, and Roman was giving the Heisman to the Usos and whatnot. And even before WrestleMania, where's Jay? We don't know what Jay's gonna do after the fallout from Royal Rumble. Is he with us? Is he not? And stuff like that. Get him back in line. So with the Civil War stuff, we kind of see saw it coming to where it was going to come to this point where it was going to be Usos versus Roman and Solo. Now, Siendo, I respect your point. I do see this going continuing way past SummerSlam because I go back to where they talked about this is just chapters in a story, but there's still many chapters to go. And not to mention, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar have unfinished business. That's not going to end anytime soon. That's probably you're going to have a third match to, for the end-all, be-all, and that's going to happen at SummerSlam. So Roman has to face someone because Seth already has a title and is going to be occupied elsewhere. What does Roman right. do? Simple. You have the Usos defeat Roman and Solo. That's why Solo's there. Solo can take this L, and then that could lead to one of the Usos getting a title shot. Maybe Roman makes them go through hoops and ladders, and it's Jay that comes out on top to where now you get Roman and Jay, and it brings this storyline all the way full circle because the whole point of this tribal chief run started with Roman getting the title, making Jay fall in line. I am the head of the table, wreck shop and leave and shit like that. Fall in line or else I'm going to put you to sleep. Like I did at night of champions. Like I did at Helm cell when even I put your brother to sleep. So Roman and Jay at SummerSlam brings that story full circle to where now that can complete that two plus year storyline arc. And then where you go from there is then you can start building up Cody Rose. Cause then by that time, Cody should be done with Brock. And now you start to build Cody back into that main event picture of, I also have unfinished business with you, Roman, and I got to find my way onto SmackDown so I can go get them damn titles. But this story is not done anytime soon. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, What other matches are you guys excited for on Saturday? Let me see what's announced. uh, Easy. Cody uh, Dom. Oh, yeah. I think that's gonna be uh, yeah. I think this yeah. is I think this is gonna be a huge like you have two legacies going against one another. It's a huge thing for it's a huge thing for Dom. Like I said, his his stock is going up, y'all. Really as a heel. You have I'm the best baby face. Him. The you number two. one baby face taking on a number one heel. 
You have the son uh, of a plumber versus the uh, a newly Hall of Fame Latino legend, like an icon. So, I mean, both of them are culminating their own stories, which is what I like because we're moving yeah. farther away from Cody being Dusty's son, and we're moving farther away from Rey Mysterio being the defective child of Rey. So mm. I like where this is going. I like. I feel like I'm going to enjoy this match. You got two hardworking people. I feel like Dom's worked really hard on his craft. I think Cody has improved his craft. So I think it's going to be a match I enjoy. Yeah. Me too. I'm excited for it. I'm like just I'm... excited. Like you mentioned, Brian, like the crowd alone is mm-hmm. going to be fun to see. They are going to go in on Dom. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wonder. I want to know what the numbers are going to be. Like, but I, I tell you this because have, what, have they ever been the? They haven't been in Neo two ever. I don't think so. Is, but I know every time they go to England, it's a smaller arena. Mm-hmm. Unless they, well, they did Wembley obviously years ago, right? Um, but I want to see a new world heavyweight champion. I know Seth Rollins really? just got the belt, but I don't want to see Seth hold the title. In a like for months and months and months, I want to see. I don't see... think they're gonna give it to Finn though. Play hot potato. Yeah, and I think Finn like give him his moment. He needs how... a win. Yeah, he, absolutely. Why? And he why just always loses and he Maybe doesn't that's win okay. matches that he should win. There's a lot like, of people that have been going I through knew... that for years. But look, all this but... like, this whole story with him and Seth that goes all the way back to SummerSlam, like. He got to get that receipt. He got to get his win back. And this is the, like this would be a great time, even if Damian Sandow wins the money. Um, even if Damian <laughs> Priest wins the money <laughs> in the bank, <laughs> and then I cashes it. Sandow. <laughs> that briefcase was customly made with leather. No, nah, but I echo Brian statements where with this match because it's one of those that we talked about. Like, who needs this more? Seth mm-hmm. is already freaking over. Like Rover doesn't need the belt. Doesn't matter. That that crowd in London is gonna sing his song. I put it over under like five minutes. They're probably gonna sing it for like ten minutes while it's going on. Whereas Finn, this is unfinished business. Yeah, I beat you at SummerSlam for the title, but you fucked up my shoulder where I was on the shelf for nine months. I missed WrestleMania 33 because of you, technically. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a lot of L's and L's that I've taken where my career has dipped be- since that moment where yours has skyrocketed and there's like jealousy and anger and rage because like th- it all started from that SummerSlam match and him messing up his arm and stuff like that so there's unfinished business there plus with Finn needs it more because again you could if he's like the de facto leader of Judgment Day it doesn't really show it because it's kind of like Rhea's kind of taking over that leadership and Finn's kind of also Losing ground to Damian Priest, who's been gaining a lot more momentum. And Dom is over like Rover, so it almost feels like Finn is the odd man out. So him trying to do whatever it takes to win this title could be him reestablishing his position as, I am the leader of Judgment Day. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Rhea is Rhea. Dom Dom still gets booed when he just even says a sentence. And <laughs> Priest is still amazing, but I am still that guy. I'm that guy that can always go back to Demon Ballard and whatnot. And But... Finn and needs this is a why lot this group is us. great. Yeah, I agree. And I think, I don't know, it would be nice to see Finn win and then defend it. Even if it's for a short amount of time. Like, even if he like beats Seth on Saturday and then Seth wins it back in SummerSlam and then that could finally solidify Finn Balor to that mm-hmm. like place. Yep. Which because I, ever know. since that shoulder, we never looked at him as that top star again. And then when we started thinking about him back in that position, the Roman Reigns match happened. And Roman yeah. killed off Demon Balor. And then once we started seeing Finn get momentum again, he loses to Edge at Hell in a Cell at mm-hmm. WrestleMania. So it's like every time Finn starts to get to like, I'm on Seth's level and should be on the top level with Seth, Cody, Roman, some shit happens and it drops him like nine steps back. Thanks. Uh, how are you guys feeling about Gunther versus Riddle? We're excited, always excited. We we love Gunther. We love a good <laughs> slap. We love a good slappity slap, 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 slap. And that's always going to be, gonna be slap slapping daddy. and barefoot kicking. Happy slap, daddy. Slap, daddy. Happy I, I, slap, daddy. I, I, I like this pairing. Daddy. It, it, it's an opportunity where you actually believe that. Riddle has a chance just because he's a shoot fighter. 
So right. it's not one of those things where we knew he was going to like, we knew, what was it Ali at the last PLE? Mm-hmm. But this one is like, yeah, he got a chance. So I like it. Again, hey, it's gonna be a fun match. He's just gonna continue to be an Intercontinental Champion. If He's he surprised. does lose, though, it's gonna make a great storyline. If it does happen, it does but he go, who's up? Uh, Triple H always got me thinking, like, okay, what's the records, right? And that's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking, like, all right, who's record is good? He hasn't had a long huh? reigning Intercontinental Championship in a while. Yeah, but I'm thinking like is it Honky Tonk Man? I think he yeah, got a Honky pass. Honky Tonk is still number one, but I think okay. they're just closing on that. Oh yeah, yeah. He's passing that. Yeah, let's erase Honky Tonk out the books. <laughs> no, I don't have an issue. With I think saying. that's their. I think that's their. Game. I think that's the plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so this is a great were... show. Right? <laughs> Wait, so they were in Evolve in progress? Yeah, I do oh, know. So I didn't know they had fused, but I knew they. We're both over there, because you know that's when. Remember, right before the WWE Network ended, they started putting a lot of that evolved stuff on the network, and you know, and that's around the time when they had just got Walter, and you know, like I would always hear about him, but you know, like when I saw him come to WWE for NXT, I was like, oh, this dude, intense, you know. What y'all think about the women's tag team title match? Brian Stoltman said he he don't know how he feel about it. <laughs> um, I, I um, I mean, I'm glad it's on the card. It's mm-hmm. it's being defended on a big show, and I, sometimes that's really all you could be grateful for when it comes to these titles. And Liv Morgan coming back adds a lot of steam, and she has history of Ronda Rousey. They all have history with each other, so I think this. It, I honestly think this might be a sleeper match, like where you don't think it's going to be good, but then everyone like shows out. I just had to cr- be hype. Liv is going to be hyped that she's back. Raquel Rodriguez is going to, you know, she still has to prove herself Ooh. in a way. Huh? Ooh. Raquel. Raquel. The back, right back. You know, the back. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Rhonda is going to be Rhonda. And Shayna Baszler is going to carry that. And I think it's going to be really good. I just had the craziest idea. What's up? All right. I see. Two sets of tag teams in here. That money in the bank, you can cash in for any championship. What if Zoe Stark somehow Ooh. wins it and convinces and Trish Stratus manipulates her into cashing in for the tag titles? Or what if EO Sky wins it and Bailey convinces her to cash in for the tag titles? I don't know why I just thought about that, but that would be so cool. All this talk, all this and talk different. about. Yes, yeah, they want to make these tag titles relevant. I mean, that yeah, would be a splash. Like it, that's what they that those need, like a little jolt. Mm-hmm. And and as a wrestling fan, I wouldn't feel robbed of the briefcase. No, because it was just it was cool. Like it was something new, something fresh. Mm-hmm. I, I don't men have I don't done mind it? that at all. Mm-hmm. Right. It would Here's be why first. I don't like that because then you're having a heel team cash in on another heel team and swapping titles to another heel team. Huh? That's I don't care about that. <laughs> it's more. I see it's what you're like, going, but it's yeah. like the manipulation. It's like, the way, like you know, like the yeah. moment would be the moment would be dope, and yeah, like, people don't really dope. care about Ronda and Shayna as like killer faces or kind of like whatever. Mm. Yeah, true. It's like it'll be a dope moment. I'm thinking 20, 48 hours later after that moment dies down, and it's like then what? We just pass it from a heel team to another heel team. So you're making live and. Raquel, I get it. You're making Liv and Raquel go through more hoops and ladders and stuff like that. But then it's like, nah. <laughs> I see I see where you have Brian, but it's like, I'm thinking the wrestling logic where it's like, you got to remember, this is Vince still calling audibles. Vince still <laughs> believes in baby faces and heels. He, even he's going to be like, no, why the fuck would I do that and have, that's a waste of a briefcase if I'm going to have another heel team just take that. Cause then I what, see what Rana, you mean. Because then Ron Machina is going to feud with Trish and Zoe and then you're going to have two heel factions facing off. Do it like the heist of the century. Do it during the match. So you don't have to, they don't have to cash in. Technically, Rollins cashed in on a heel, cashed in on Lesnar. Now you got a triple threat. Now these three teams going to have issues with each other. Boom, tag team division is relevant. And I, I also look at it like I agree with, with, with what you're saying, Justin, and, and Brian could go either way. But Trish mm-hmm. being involved in the Money in the Bank 
like briefcase is gonna set it apart from anything else like it almost like doesn't matter that if she catches it on a heel or not like she's trish and it's gonna be a moment like regardless because who really who ever thought we would see her in a money in a bank ladder match Mm-hmm. Like I'm pretty sure she probably like you know this is it's gonna be huge mm-hmm. and I do agree I do feel like Alba Fire and Isla Dawn should get a rematch because they so they Brian, put on a bank. I'm gonna use your logic and hit you with another what if what if let's say Zelina Vega wins Money in the Bank for example and puts the briefcase on the line against Bianca who happens to be on the same show Bianca now becomes the holder of the Money in the Bank briefcase. Bianca has unfinished business with Asuka. Bianca has been teased in a match with Charlotte. Bianca and Rhea go way back. What if Bianca, and remember, Bianca's been teasing the heel turn. So what if Bianca gets the briefcase without being in the match, and now you have, all right, let's have Rhea and whoever wins the match between Charlotte and Asuka have a face-off going into SummerSlam, and then boom, here comes Bianca. And it's like, I got the briefcase, motherfuckers. Don't forget about me. So what you're saying, like Bianca's not doing anything, and she's too significant to be sitting out. She can always pull she's... a Brock Lesnar and come in the match and be like an unofficial seven person in the match. Or no, I would if... hate that. I would hate that for her. Yeah. To be real honest, um, so because it's not her speed, and I'm not saying it's not her speed because she has played heel before, but like she's done too much to just be like. I'm gonna just show the fuck up. Like somebody yeah. has to put her in the match. Like somebody to get injured and have her put in the place. I would like that more for her. I think that would be she's better done for like much. Hill Bianca. Right. So she's not Hill like, Bianca I'm yet. Up. I don't give a fuck. Now she's she's trying to, you know, do what she's the just right said thing. I'm playing with y'all because what they're doing right. isn't fair. It's not fair. You just like just because your your shiny, your shiniest toy comes back, you put her back in the back of the shelf hell no mm-hmm. she carried that company when charlotte couldn't even walk on her right foot properly and so for you to just throw her into a belt a match that for a rematch that she deserves is wrong so if we're gonna see heel bianca it would be in that and that's why i said that on twitter i said the way i want bianca to literally go into have to go back into money in the bank and get her lick back for this or for her to go up against Rhea because i like Bianca's is Bianca. If Bianca heel turn is going to happen, it's going to be Bianca that's going to be like, you always think I'm stupid. You slept on me. I showed you I'm the best. I've been showing you I'm the best. You think just because I lost this title that I'm not, I'm not on my game? No. Now I'm going to take all your gold. So what's good? And that's, I kind of, that's what I think is going to happen. I think I might be in a minority in the world. I don't see Bianca turning heel. I see her having an edge. A heel turn in but here's the, the thing. So I'm always thinking about it I have a obviously, you know, a um, jaded mindset when I think about this. But just hearing her talk about how much she loves her fan base now, what I'm seeing is the evolution of her teaching her fans how to deal with adversity, teaching them little girls you don't get played with, you don't get disrespected because she's already showed the happy go lucky side. Now she has to teach them how to like stay true to yourself, but make sure don't nobody mess with you. So that's what I see her being that tweener s like think about how much we love stone cold steve austin he wasn't a cookie cutter baby face but he was like nah we learn as uh rebel teenagers nah don't let nobody mess with you don't let your teachers talk to you any kind of way right and we learned that from stone cold and that's what i think bianca's going to do but in with your point she could do it that way still being a tweener fan favorite but like nah you ain't gonna mess with me because you took something from me right um. Yeah. This, the whole uh, is just don't rule it out. Agree. Don't rule out. I wouldn't, I wouldn't rule it out them. either, especially down mm-hmm. the line, because it's gonna be one of those things where like Bailey's fans grew up. Yeah, bingo. Mm-hmm. And then Bianca mm-hmm. Belair's fans are gonna grow up to a certain extent, and mm-hmm. you might want to have a little bit more fun as a heel. Like I look at it, at it like Becky in a way where she never, when she turned heel, she mm-hmm. never lost her fans. Mm. Right. Like we might have booed her because we were like, you know, big time Bex. We kind of want to boo you, but we she never like lost fans. She never dipped in merchandise sales. Like little kids were still coming to see her at signings and stuff like that. So I think Bianca Belair got so good that she if she wanted to have a little bit of fun as a heel, I don't think she should do it anytime soon. But I say like a couple years on the line, if she wants to do a little heel run, 
I think she could do it. And I'm always thinking like next up from the company standpoint. And I'm thinking like when you ready to call Roxanne up, because I think Roxanne is like up next as far as being that Uber cookie cutter baby face. She's still getting like that finishing school. But I think, you know, and then she's already got that ready made feud that's going to carry on with Cora Jade. Yeah, I love that one. Um, let's get into some of these other matches happening on um on Saturday. Did we talk about the men's the men's uh, money in the bank? No, we haven't. <laughs> so who do y'all see taking it? I think the world is saying LA Knight. I'm sticking. I, I, look, I, I, I like him. I'm going with Damian Priest. I'm going with Damian Priest mm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I they, you know I feel who like, the, the 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 wild cards in here are oh. Ricochet Ooh. and anyway. Pete Dunn, in my opinion. Really? Yes. Interesting. Oh, that that crowd would go. Oh, oh my the the wild those two that specifically, crowd? they're the wild card for me. With like Pete as much Dunn? as listen, I I would give Logan Pre- Logan Paul all the credit in the world. Baby has done his homework and is <laughs> flying through the class with colors. But I really think those two are my wild card because if y'all don't understand when Ricochet was print with what was his name in the Indian circuit, Prince what? Prince Puma. Prince Puma. They loved him in the UK. They yeah, liked him a yep. lot in the UK. So he's gonna get that pull. And then Pete Dunn is hello NXT UK. Enough freaking mm. said. They're my wild cards, oh, but I yeah, I didn't even think of that. Priest. I think it's going to priest, but I, I think two, it's gonna go. To be... Yeah, I would. I think LA yes. Knight is gonna win because mm. I don't see. I want so in my mind, I want Finn oh. Balor to be Steph, and I don't see Finn becoming champion and Damian Priest winning a briefcase. It could happen. Okay. I'm just saying I don't see it. But and I, I think Ricochet's there for the spots. Like let's let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you think he's a shot? And he Logan he's a Paul's the yeah, he's there because he's gonna jump off shit and he's gonna look fucking cool. Him if he Logan wins, Paul. that would we'll be great. Again. But I don't see him yeah. winning. Logan Paul, the same thing. That international people might hate him, but he is has billions of followers all over the world. So that was a good look. And yeah. Shinsuke, Shinsuke, I, I say LA Knight all the way. I like LA Knight. I, I, I'm not. A lot of people are you on the yeah train and stuff, and they see him like I'm yeah. even hearing people who are saying like, "Man, like he's <laughs> the next." He's gonna... I, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not sorry. there yet either. Like I don't like people. You got people saying like, "Oh, Austin Rock levels." First of all, no, slow it's down. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, slow down. Serious. Like it's I'm, attractive, I, but it ain't that attractive. Thank you. Like. Thank you. No. And he's actually <laughs> from Maryland, but no. You know, you just I had to just... throw that one in, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Look, we don't get too many. Look, we still trying to erase the rich swan. Oh, state. now you're a part of Maryland, not, not just Baltimore. Well, go ahead. And I just said he's actually <laughs> a part of Maryland. <laughs> but <laughs> Look, look, it's a lot of L's, okay, in the state. That's we, we don't get too many W's, you know. Um, but I, I think he has, I think he has something. And by him being older, you know, he understands the business. But I'm not ready to say he's going to be the next biggest megastar. I can't say that. I just so think them giving it to Logan will be a clusterfuck. I'm sorry. Like, Defend that he signed another year, we get it, but I don't see um easy. See, you know, this is a thing called YouTube. No, millions and millions of subscribers. But, no, okay. Look, you you a wrestling fan, and I get it, but you know, sports entertainment seeing that briefcase on his show at his brother's boxing matches. That's money. That's that's literally free advertising because he's your money in the bank briefcase. What's that? Oh, I can cash in and become a WWE champion anytime I want. Go ahead, Justin. <laughs> so, so here's where I'm at. And I'm going to go unpopular opinion again. <laughs> here's why Logan Paul is going to win Money in the Bank. Number one, it comes out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And you got to remember, who's booking this show? Vince McMahon. What is no, Vince he's McMahon not. like? No. Hush. Y'all can, we talk? Stop. Let, can we put Vince McMahon in the box? You can throw yes, Vince McMahon in the box, but let me, get this, let me get this off. I'll let y'all, I'll, I'll let y'all get the shit. So... <laughs> Thing 
bigger picture, Logan Paul, someone that has all these attention, millions of subscribers. You see Prime blowing up all over the place that you see people coming out to go <laughs> have Logan Paul and KSI, not an advertisement. You have people coming out to watch Logan Paul and KSI bring Prime to their states, to their countries. They are traveling all over the world with this stuff, with Prime or whatnot. Also, look at who's your champions right now. Logan has history with Roman going back to that match in Saudi. Logan also has history with Seth freaking Rollins going back this year. Logan winning that briefcase, there is an outlet for you can always run back Logan Paul and Roman Reigns at any time. There's also an outlet, which I think is more likely, where Logan gets that briefcase and takes that fucking title off of Seth Rollins down the line. Now, it could be SummerSlam. It could be Money in the Bank. It could mm -hmm. be later on. But imagine Logan Paul traveling the world, prime in one hand, Money in the Bank briefcase in the other, getting, bringing all that attention and all that media stuff to where when he does cash in, it's going to be a fucking national, international news, not just national, international. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. And when yeah. you think big picture, you're, you're that not. makes so oh. much fucking sense. Yep. No, I, I can totally see that happening, and everything that you said makes total sense. And also, Logan isn't going to be on the show every week, so he could take that surprise element that we were talking about to a whole nother level, because he could just, like, pop up one day, like, literally, because he's he not meant to be on every show. can literally make a video, post it on social media, and they replay that video on Raw. On Raw. So when right. Seth's wrestling, he retains, all of a sudden, boom, here's a video, and Logan's just taunting him, like, TikTok, motherfucker. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, that that could be good. That could be good. But I, well, I'm all speaking in all, I'm excited for the entire show. What's up, Brian? I was just to say, speaking of blood, the bu uh, Bullet Combat Club is beating up the elite again and making them bleed. Oh, uh, Blackpool Combat Club time. <laughs> yeah, Black. I called them the Bullet Club. <laughs> yeah, them. Sorry, but that was our AEW update, brought to you by Those Wrestling Girls Patreon account. Well, you can subscribe for I just one dollar. <laughs> yes, please do <laughs> if you haven't already. It's a lot of content on there. But I'm excited for the show. I might be at that brunch event on Saturday. So, Dre, I, will I see you there? See you. Maybe we'll end up at brunch. I don't know. No. Eggs, bacon, and wrestling. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Mimosas in wrestling. I don't know. I'm with it. I'm with. I'm with it. I'm with it. Let's that see what happens. Good. Good. And then we need to be like somehow at the next one. I need to be at the next London show because we got people out there that we need to meet. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of those crowds that don't get wrestled WWE shows a lot, so I could just feel yeah. that like you know that energy again. That is like yeah. super cool. But um, I want to thank everybody um, for coming. That's the goal to that go to a pay per view in a different country. That part, right? And I was gonna say payback so Pittsburgh cool. crowd that don't get wrestling like paper PLEs. I'm lot. not going to Pittsburgh. I'll say they get shows often compared no, to <laughs> PLEs. PLEs is a different story. No, I'm I not feel going like they, I feel like they've gotten a recent one. I'm not going to Pittsburgh yeah. for that. I mean, it's like a AEW go there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's Britt Baker's hometown. Yeah. Mm. So AW definitely goes there, oh, but I mean, it's a nice city, it's a nice venue, but at the same time, it's like not. It's been a minute since they've gotten a, a PLE, but at the same time, they get stuff compared to like DC, who gets skipped <laughs> all the time. Would you consider Pittsburgh a wrestling town? This home of Bruno. So, I mean, but it's like Bruno's home. The, yeah, the, his you fan know, base is in New York. You know where they haven't gone yet? They haven't gone to Mexico. I don't know if they want to. Uh, yeah, I think there's re there's many reasons behind that. Yeah, yeah I, I only I, hear I, really I, bad things. I t I persuaded yeah, certain wrestlers certain that's retired not to go there. Ain't the safest if you uh out of towner. Factor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But you I know one thing. Me. They'll be you, here you in Baltimore ladies, like, on Monday. Uh, you said your own oh, state. I will be there. You coming? Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling up. I'm taking. Yes, a drive sir. Yeah. I gotta see. I gotta see this. 
Like finally done, yet. reconstructed monstrosity piece of shit <laughs> that is wow. This arena downtown. Just, just come make down. sure come you in. get in. No, because here's the thing, Sienna. We've talked about this on previous fan clubs. On like that arena in Baltimore, it feels like a college arena compared to like MSG or Barclays. It's like running Hammerstein and stuff like that. I can't like, relate. Like, I can't relate. Wow, this is disrespectful. It was just long overdue that you guys finally fixed that arena. No, and this the, is the well, first you, time where you get a wrestling you show. Know, you know what arena don't need fixing? Prudential because I a like dynamite. Well, sorry, Collision is coming to Newark. On the twenty second. Ooh, so that's cute. My blackity black of ass, my OBO in there. Just that saying. Cute. We're checking Damn, tickets July for July. Yeah. Oh God, I can't. July Fresh out so of Canada. Good, but oh, collision collision means CM Punk most likely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's a- and FTR. Y'all seen right, Punk right, in person right. before, right? No. Well, I I, I did at Mania. Uh, I did I for saw... a brief second. Okay. Because no, he left. He left the night because of his injury. Like he, yeah. people didn't know he got injured after WrestleMania. He came out for that promo, and that mm. was it. He didn't gotcha. wrestle. Yeah, I saw. I was. I saw most of his uh, him twice during his WWE Championship run, and then the week before the pipe bomb, it was here when he did Angel Wings in the ring. So I've seen him twice, and funny enough, it was during this AEW run. He's only wrestled one time that I've seen him, and it was that five-second match where he was feeding with MJF, and MJF sent fucking um, Sean Spears to wrestle for him, CM Punk, GTS, one, two, three. I was like, oh, shit, this is a perfect Punk match. <laughs> Good. <laughs> entrance, entrance, Justin, bell Justin, rings, bell ring. Cool. Justin, thread lightly. I'm not playing with you. He's he. Listen, Ooh. say what you want about there? him. It's the yeah, fan. Back there. Stop, he's back here. First have of all, Bravo he's still back there. She's also a punk fan, too. Yeah, Ooh. I'm still a fan. They say what you want about him, watch your tongue. Okay? I wasn't talking, shit. it was a matter of like, I wasn't expecting like a 15 20 minute match, but same time, I wasn't expecting like a five second match either. I was like, fucking shocked. Like, wait, I waited all these years. Remember, I wasn't watching at 2011 when he does the money in the bank match with John Cena. I wasn't watching Summer of Punk. When I started watching wrestling, that's when Punk just left. And then okay. that entire year going to WrestleMania 31, that's the whole lawsuit shit. So it's this guy that I never got to see in person. And then it was just like, fuck it, I'm hanging it up. I'm not wrestling. So for me to watch and be like excited because I get to finally watch CM Punk wrestle. I get to finally hear fucking cult of personality in an arena. And it's like, cool, here you go. Five, five second match. I was like, wait, what? What the hell? Grand opening, grand closing? It's like, yeah. But then they made up for it the next night where... After Rampage, he came out and talked to the crowd after the show went off the air and shit like that and got to chop it up. He was out there longer. So, But that's my introduction to CM Punk in person. It's like a five-second match. And I was like, I was expecting it, but cool. No, that, it's not talking shit, CM. Going to Collision will not accept any more CM Punk slander going forward. The guy hadn't wrestled in how many years before he came back to 80? It doesn't matter. It's he, being realistic. He shook his boots off. Just like Daniel Bryan's allowed to shake his boots off every time he flips a company, everybody has done it. You, everybody talks so much high might about all these wrestlers that come back and do their thing. CM Punk is doing the exact same thing. Granted, whatever happened backstage, what happened backstage, men have egos. Like, let's be real, they have egos the way that women have periods at this point. It happens, everybody's trying to move to the situation. But it's not one person. I am still a fan of him no matter what. Do I get tired of some of the shit that's going on? Yeah, I'm tired of hearing about the night in the locker room. I wasn't there. I don't care who kicked the door in. I'm sorry that Larry lost the front tooth. I'm tired of it, but I'm still a fan. And I think for him to come back... Everybody a man, bro. I see like, him back I there. Think, I see him back there. Like, where, man, I think I'm about to the, back. Whoa, the a- buzz w. in the club talking about CM Punk. I didn't know CM Punk was this hell that CM was like, I will fist fight you. Over. <laughs> yes, I will, sit, I will sit on that hill. I told you guys this already. Like, despite for everything that happened for him to still come back and be like, let me just do this show, I'm going to die on it. And I'm going to buy those tickets to Clinton and, and I'm going to have needle. me a good fucking time. <laughs> pushes the needle. Thank you. That's really, baby. and that's really what it, all it is. Yeah. Like, you can talk all the shit that you Enough want. Enough for Dave Meltzer to literally go on lock and, yeah. and he's going to sell tickets, like, point blank, period. Dave Meltzer has a so hard period every that. time he gets to talk about him. So, must be doing something right. 
Right. End of story. No, I totally like Doc agree. would say. <laughs> it just was like, I don't want no smoke. She's on that hill all by herself. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> and no, the fuck I'm not. No, we're going to bring Pablo on one of these days and they're going to, because they call themselves a CM Punk apologist. So mm-hmm. I think y'all have a lot in common. Right. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure out, get you guys on like a stream or something. So y'all could talk about that. Cause it's a very yep. polarizing thing. And like I said, that's what you want to be in wrestling. Polarizing. And exactly. CM Punk was one of those people. Shit. He didn't even wrestle in crowds. Literally chanted his name. It's for years, for mm-hmm. years. So like, you're not gonna shy away from that type of like, you know, polarizing energy so i respect cm punk for that and stand and stand by him cm doll thank you like do you know do do your thing but i do want to wind down and thank everybody for joining us again for another edition of twg fan club one of my favorite nights of the week talking about wrestling with you guys my crew and all of our vips i'm not sure what we're gonna be talking about next week but i would love suggestions from our club members so tweet it comment hashtag twg fan club and we will you know we'll get into it all because fan club is nothing without all of you and it's nothing without my crew so where can everybody find you guys you can find me on all social media platforms at It's Justin Rich. You can find me here Wednesday nights from 7 to 9 p.m. for TWG Fan Club with these three illustrious, beautiful, intelligent co-hosts of mine. You can catch me from time to time, Twitter Spaces, Tuesday nights around 6.35 p.m. for Turnbuckle Talk with me and Corey, where we talk all things wrestling. Right now, they're on a hiatus. They're looking on coming back around July, so that's where you could ca- catch us then. You can catch me from time to time on True Hill Heat Sports and True Hill Heat Wrestling. Both of those channels are located on YouTube. We talk sports, wrestling, and all that fun stuff. We here. We outside. We active. Money in the Bank is here. The fourth Ooh. official, the big four of the pay-per-views. Let's go. London. So y'all can find me, Brian H. Waters, on all social media platforms, that being Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook fan page. And you can also find me tonight on the Wrestling Realm Now podcast. We are talking Money in the Bank as well as AEW, especially with Jack Perry, because I'm not calling him Jungle Boy no more, because he just declared it's an ending of that song. Um, So we're going to talk about that and more. Also, make sure you check out this week's episode of Wednesday Worldwide, where we talked about Vince McMahon's changes and how WWE is trying to Vince proof these last minute changes. And of course, we also talked about you'll hear why I think the judgment day is better than evolution. So all that and more. Also, make sure you check out <laughs> last week's episode of the Grab City Pod where I was on with uh, Phil and Red. Shout out to them. Thanks for the invite. So make sure y'all check that out. And I'm here, you know, tweet at me. And as always, it is your honorary wrestling girl, C and O B. You can catch me on Instagram at reload.relive. You can also catch me on YouTube on reload.relive. You can also catch me defending CM Punk and apologizing Let's for try. all his be- yes, yes. Let's check me try. out on YouTube, y'all. C and O B. You can put that on the search bar. I am doing Look with blogs and picture. daily shorts. Don't y'all like my headshot? I mean, I, I it. love okay. it, and yeah, I love your vlog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank Teach you. Also, I also I am taking headshots, people. The headshot bookings are officially open. So if you Ooh. need a professional headshot, I am your brawl. So if you want a luscious headshot like that, please hit me up. Also, you can catch me on Twitter being a CM Punk apologist 24-7-365 and shooting the shit at Relive via Film. Um, You can also always catch me on No Matter What with my wrestling family and the three bestest friends that anybody can have every Wednesday with TWG Fan Club. Hopefully we'll be doing more stuff because we are returning to Thirsty Thursdays officially. Our Thursdays are open. We are getting tipsy tips. Summer (laughs) is approaching. Everybody playing your summers. Have fun. Hope to see you at a PLE soon. Hope to see you basically go outside like my brother Justin would always say, touch grass. Because it's summertime. 
and I love you all. Thank that you, was, Brian. Oh, I love that. Thank Make you, sure Brian. you guys subscribe. Subscribe to Justin Rich YouTube channel, Wrestling Realm, Brian H. Waters, and Appreciate all the Christmas. projects he got going on. <laughs> yeah, we out here. We definitely out also, here. Subscribe to our Patreon. Also, shout out once again. Don't forget, people. Um, if you're going to be in the DMV area, if you can attend BlurCon, don't Ooh. be afraid to stop by our panel. Yeah. We are working very, we are working on something very unique, very special. Don't be afraid to stop by our panel, say hi, support all the content creators, the black nerds out here, because we out here. We need to be out here a whole lot more. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. And I can't wait to see you all next Saturday in the DMV. Wait, what is it? Outside of DC, right? Crystal yeah, City. Right? DMV. So Still Crystal considered City. DMV. Yeah. It's the DMV. Okay, yeah, there you go. So I, I will be there. We will all be there living it up. I'm excited for that. And we will see you guys next week. Every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Bye. We'll see y'all later. See you back in the club. Nick Blair.